And with any luck, we're actually now live streaming to Twitch once again. Oh boy. <laughs> a little bit delayed Hello. as technology decides it's going to have its own mind for a while. Welcome to Legend of the Drowned Isles, a 5th edition D&D homebrew game in which uh, I uh, give all my players something to kill. <laughs> I, think, <Yay. laughs> I think that's kind of what's happening uh, right now. Uh, speaking of my players, they are gathered around the virtual table, all of us clustered at home. But how about we all say hello uh, let's start with, uh, we'll have them on uh, as they are on the screen, starting with Pat. My name is Pat, and I'm playing Emran Alisar, Wood Elf Cleric. Am I next? I'm still seeing Pat's screen. Uh, go ahead and click on my face, right. or the, the master one, so you see everybody at once. Okay, okay. I will do that while I uh, introduce myself. Hi, I'm Nax, and I play Zekis, half-elf wizard, who looks pretty rough right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Ray. I play Elzara, who's the Wood Elf Druid. Hi, I'm Jody. I play Clark, the half orc fighting rogue. And I'm Mark the Caffeinated One, the GM uh, and uh, uh, IT <laughs> center and everything else right now as we try to pull it all together. Uh, I will switch actually all of us to our uh, our map screen because we're going to be jumping right back into where we were to give you some idea of where we were after encountering the transformed disease orcs uh, the in the town of or the the homestead of Aza in the Orc Dana. The group quickly checked on the other rooms of the ill people, restoring them to health early enough before the infestation had truly taken hold. Soon after, they gained an audience with Expa, who uh, they know is a hag, but, but is disguised, or is actually the elder orc of this town of Aza. After relating what they encountered, she identified it. She called the creatures the Sladi, an extraplanar parasite. Although challenged about uh, her relationship to the orcs that she rules over, she beseeches the group to look for looked for the breach with, uh, where the Slotty arrived. The group is better equipped to handle this, she suggested, at least in part, because few of the orcs have healing abilities. Even fewer might be able to combat this parasitic infection. The group discovered that the infected had all returned from the same area, a portion of the ancient underground dwarven dwelling, which was still being explored for whatever secrets it might hold. They also discovered that a few of the original party who had gone out did not return. Having descended into the depths of this new city, or this old city, I should say, they did indeed encounter a sladi, and one of which was taken down. Another one stumbled into the scene and soon turned tail and ran as it encountered a fiery fire zira, as we're calling it right now, uh, as well as uh, the the others, we uh, we we ended that battle midway in part because of technical difficulties, <laughs> which is always going to be uh, somewhat uh, challenging for us here. For those of you following along at home, uh, the way that I am giving you a vision very close to what the players can see is I am using a technology known as a placeholder. <laughs> It's not really much for technology. But uh, last week I just grabbed a random icon and used that as my centerpiece uh, character I played in a Curse of Strahd game. But in this case, uh, it is the POV dot. So for you, those of you at home who are wondering, what is that dot in the middle of the screen? That is, in fact, the POV dot, where it's going to be moved around, hopefully, to keep track of where the players are actually engaged. Um, I'd like to point out that I am not, not on the screen. All I yeah. see is the uh, the square of Pat's color. It's, yeah, it's taking her picture. Uh, she has been moved down slightly, um, uh, slightly covered over. Well the the fire zero I'll, I'll just move it this way maybe you can see better no not 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 in roll 20 in the actual on the, on the main screen that we're showing the audience Sarah's oh yeah anymore. well she's she's there she's there she's no. just half represented Me. uh <laughs> like actual like actual Ozera's not there anymore fire zero actual actual marie. marie marie's picture is oh, gone marie. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you very much for pointing that out. Uh, sorry about that. I was looking at, at two different things no. here. Yay. You said Elzera, not Marie, which is why it got me really confused. No. Uh, 
Yes. Okay. No, me. Let's see how that. Uh, yep. Okay. I know what happened. Now I got to fix that. Mm -hmm. Pardon me while I contact tech support and tell them to. All right. Um, I think that's what I clicked, which is different. Okay. And hopefully now. the. <laughs> so for those of you wondering about the technical explanation, it happens to be that when you don't see these things to be exclusive, uh, when you cover one window over another, it takes that instead of the actual window you had hoped. So now I've got to adjust because naturally everything is off and I'm hitting the wrong keyboard. It's running commentary brought to you by Mass Confusion mm -hmm. uh, as stay at home has has started to affect my, I don't know, mind. Let's call it mind. Let's just say that. All right. Nonetheless... What had just taken place was uh, the Fury Fire Zera, as I have now named the icon, which you can now see, uh, yeah, partly of. Uh, in fact, I will just shrink you down to be the size to fit in the hallway at the moment. We can always make you bigger again because you shrunk down to fit in the hallway. I uh, had uh, been chasing after one of the Sladi, one of the, I believe it was a blue Sladi yep. that... Uh, had been running away from you. It had run down around the corner. And we were desperately calling out for backup as it was Clark's turn. But Clark uh, had vanished into the technological wastelands. So welcome back, uh, Clark oh, slash Jody. Thank you. Things be strange to be running quite well. Glad to be back. Uh, we're going to continue initiative order. It is Clark's turn. Oh, so... Uh, what would you like to do? I'd like to have Clark uh, approach where the action is. So I'm going to probably head, let's see here, uh, east. Okay, you should be able to move your own icon. Yeah, I'm just letting you know what's happening. Okay. Uh, In case of lag. Uh, it's very fair. Yeah. There we go. And uh, there's a creature um, yonder, yeah? Yeah, it's perfectly just There's a creature. All right, then. Uh, I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's their turn. Also having to move my different... This is just... I need like five more screens. <laughs> five more screens and I'll be fine. Uh, let's see. Okay. Top of the round, El Zera, Fire Zera, as I've labeled there. If you have better names for them, go ahead. I have named all your elementals some cute approximation of an El Zera transliteration. <laughs> You're muted. El Zera, you're muted. Ah, there we go. Oh, yeah, it was eating. <laughs> uh where am i there we go uh okay so i saw it go around the corner so that's right i'm going to okay i'm going to get out of that so that i can actually see what's going on uh and, sorry i was here so one two three four five as you look down the unlit hallway you do not see it that gets me to 100 feet of movement, or 50 feet of movement, sorry. Right. On either side of you, you see the uh, remnants of stone doors still in place. Look like they've uh, have sort of fallen in place, but they have not moved. The far end of the hallway, you do see some rubble piled in a corner. Okay. And behind me, that's just nothing. Like here. Uh, there is. That's there's another door right there. There is another door. Yeah. Um, I will keep us on this page though. <laughs> um, I will move to here. Bless you. <laughs> oh, that's my roommate. <laughs> In the other room. Uh, you just walked through a door. Oh, there is so... a door. There is a door right to left and right of you. Okay. Both I thought sides. it was a hallway. Um, 
is there any room around the door? The stone doors have kind of fallen and sagged into place. You can take a look around to see if you can find a spot. You can do an investigation or a perception. Is there a spot around the door that's an inch wide? That's what yes. you're looking for. Well, that would be obvious. But it's not that obvious. Uh, never mind. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a it's a stone door that's basically fallen in place, and it looks practically like a wall. You'd have to look around to see if there's any openings. Okay, you and I are visioning something completely different. Um, but I'll, I'll just stay there then. Okay. And I'll hold an attack. In case it gets close. Yep. Okay. I'm Rune, your turn. You're muted. Mm hmm Well, hmm. Hmm. I'll heal myself. Okay. Casting cure wounds. Mm -hmm. All right, a little flash of bluish energy up in front of you, Clark, as you see uh, Amrun temporarily engulfed oh. in these comforting waves. Zakis. Well, I don't want way this back there. creature that got her to run off and regenerate, so I'll take off down the hallway after it and follow the firepower. Where am I? Okay, I'm gonna... How do we do the thing again? Yes, this. You should be able to click on your icon and move it. I want to see the distance. Oh, that's the one that looks like a power symbol. Okay. Just click on the power symbol, and then you'll be into that tool. There you go. So I'll move 60 feet. Whoa. So you hustle on, on down. Okay. Scooch on by Clark in this narrow hallway. He's tiny. Obviously, these, these, this place was built to dwarf's size, and these hallways are only five feet wide. Do I have to, uh, to uh, miss the door frame? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can squeeze on by. The door frame's been opened. Well, I rolled a 17, so I don't bang my head on it. Oh, well, that's, that's handy. Let me see if this will help. And I'll scream to my compatriots, don't let it get away. Oh, I see. There was supposed to be a doorway there, and there was not. Huh. Still getting used to all this dynamic lighting stuff. There. So you screamed to your compatriots after running, don't let it get away. All right. Clark. Uh, we should probably do that, then. Uh, Clark will do the movements. Okay. Uh, kind of get awkwardly close. moving around and kind of keeping the glaive out, not trying to stab anybody yes. you are friends with. Push that I get to there way. easily enough. Uh, and then there's a fire creature to the north of me. Yep. Uh, and there's a door to my east. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, didn't go through that door. Does not seem disturbed. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend a. Uh, bonus action to move another 30. Okay. 25. I can actually go 35. I'm going to go just short of the fire lady. Okay. Stay put. The flames are quite quite warm, but thankfully you know who these flames are. Ah. I've been in them recently. <laughs> it's true. All right. Anything in the general area I should be noting? Uh, you also see the two doors. It looks as though the doors have, um, sorry, I'm trying to delete something. It looks as though the doors have sort of settled in on themselves. Okay. Uh, they look like they were heavy, well-fit doors. Okay. Thank Anything you. else you'll have to take a little longer look at yeah. to, uh, to see. Just trying to. Oh, 
that's not what I wanted. All right. Let's see if that worked. All right. I don't know if that worked or not, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, make a perception tech check, both uh, Elzera and Clark. I got to look up. Ten. That's how that works. It's the it's the large numbers the total. Okay. The ten is just your your uh, bonus. Okay. Uh, Twenty two. Okay. I'm just gonna close the door here. Sure. Uh, as you kind of stand there and the flames uh, seem to be focused a little bit, looking at one of the doors or not. You can hear from far down the hallway the sound of footprint of footsteps, ah. as it seems to be making an escape. All right. From which direction? North, I think he said. You don't notice, but oh. uh, Clark <laughs> has pinpointed it as further down the hallway. Clark looks north. <laughs> and sees only hallway from here. Let's see. Just something. Okay. Uh, Elzera, you're up. Um, I'm going to keep going forward. Okay. Uh, is this... Looks like a pile of rubble that's there. At one point, this may have filled the entire hallway, but it looks like it's been shoved and, and uh, pushed aside, partially ex excavated. You can move through it. It is difficult terrain. Although in your case, that doesn't really matter much. If there's an inch worth of room. <laughs> As that is. Uh, sorry, it's hard to count my spaces because I'm not the right size. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it'd be easier to see you at that size. I can make you bigger. If you can make me, yeah, the right size, just so I can keep track of where I am. Whoa. There you go. So that is one, two, three. So, okay, I would have been here. The the distance doesn't change depending on where you, what size you are, though. So it, it changes where I start from. Right? Fair. Because with one square, I'd be there. With two squares, I'd be there. I'd say just pick a quadrant of it and use that as the the, uh, the starting point. Four, five, six, seven. So I can get here. Do I see anything as... from going up that hallway? Is that another door? So uh, you do see a hallway uh, off to your right and a hallway straight on from uh, where you are. At the very end of the hallway, you see a door which has been broken, and a small amount of light is spilling out from that door. Uh, that That's if I keep going forward? That's right. So down in this direction. Let's see if this will work. Nope, wrong down, button. Let's try 10, this button. 11, 12. So that's my full movement. Yeah, so towards that direction. And you can see the broken door with the stone piling out from it. And a bit of light beyond. Um, and I'm going to like flatten myself so I'm like just an inch of flame at the top of the space so people can go. Okay. Squish myself flat so my my crew can can move. <laughs> that sounds good. It's always considerate of a fire elemental when it doesn't you know accidentally burn. It's <laughs> yes. Social distancing in a fire elemental is much more important yeah. than we most. Yep. Uh, I'm Rune. The flames have grown much dimmer in the hallway ahead, meaning that probably you're... As I was about to say, because her light illuminated the hallway in front of you to the left, they have now grown dim, meaning she's probably moved on. Is 
So, you continue to move on. Scooch on by uh, Clark again. You see the doors to left and right of you. I've moved the lighting back a little bit to make it easier to see. Uh, and then the rubble at the end. You do see the faint flicker of uh, the flames of Fire Zera uh, sort of licking at the, uh, uh, the hallway ahead of you up that way. Okay, that was your move and action. Yep. Okay. Um, that makes it uh, Zakis' turn. <sighs> Keep running. Okay, so 30 feet for here. And then I'll dash another 30 feet. Hey, move. Oh, wait. Scroll up. Yeah, I'll dash, but only to where behind, only to behind Clark. Okay. Oh, to have a, a lightning Actually, just a... <laughs> strike right now. Yeah, because if I go forward, I'm going to be like on a ruined square. So. Okay. Uh, are you casting anything? Or that was your double yeah. move anyway, wasn't it? All right. I'm trying to catch up. Uh, I'm looking Clark. thoroughly exhausted and like a train wreck. I'd like to attempt an athletic feat. All right. My intent is to... Uh, barrel up to the corner, um, use the wall as a way to get around, uh, hopefully using the glaive as a bit of a steadying point. And I'm just going to circumvent the rubble altogether as I take the corner. <laughs> Sounds cool. Yeah. Uh, make that Great. an athletics or acrobatics I think athletics role. is pretty cool. It's very cool All right, then. in this case. Uh, so, As, yes, you charge on down the hallway, barreling straight at this. Let the glaive extend out just a little bit to catch the extra corner there and kind of put two feet on the far wall and barrel around. You see the large ball of fire that is Elzera right in front of you. All right. She seems to have not taken that left hand or that right hand path you can see right there beside Yeah, uh, Clark will stop there, I would imagine. Uh, and have a peek around. Right. Maybe use his senses. Okay. Why is that not working? Uh, there was a way that I could check your line of sight. That's something that seems nothing seems to be working, so we're fine. Right. Uh, you can see at the end of the hallway, again as I described, this uh, partially revealed doorway uh, with bright light on the other side. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the light seems to be streaming somewhat outward from within. Okay. What about north? Looks like a short hallway that turns to its to your right, or turns eastward, I guess you would say, after about 10 okay. feet. Uh, I'll hold. All right. Uh, I will have Clark and Elzera make perception checks. Perception. That sure is not on the ceiling. <laughs> All right. Both of you notice slight changes in the light up ahead. There's intermittent interruptions of this sort of greenish and red mixed colored light. Uh, and you're noticing it mostly around the edge of that door as you realize that there are stones being stacked in front of what's left of the door and piled up to close off the entrance. Fair enough. It hasn't completed it yet, but it is trying. Um, just a point. I'm pretty sure that thing was on fire. Did, uh, unless it spent an action to not be on fire. Slap, drop, and roll. The blue one? Uh, yeah, when it first caught on fire, its next action was to go through the watery stuff. No, but I, I shared it face when I was like in the hallway where, where we started. Yep, it was on it was on fire. Um, roll your D6 I believe. Uh, D10 for both or just for one? Just once. Just once? Okay. Oof, nice. 
and you can kind of smell in the air a little bit of, of burned flesh. I had forgotten it last turn and remembered it midway through, so. Mm. Fair Didn't enough. want to interrupt. Uh, it is your turn. It is my turn. Cool. Um, I see them trying to stack stuff up. Is there a space I can slip in? Absolutely. Cool. They've only got about half of that area. It's about, it's about six inches wide and the entire length of the of the uh, of the door. Cool. Which you can see as you get close has also been kind of leaned back in its frame. Um, I'm gonna go through it then because I, if there's an inch of space. Yep, easily enough. Um, you kind of crash on through the door. And it's there. And it's there. You also notice that the the floor is covered in about six to eight inches of water, cool. which it is standing in. Uh, I stay up near the ceiling okay. because of fire. Uh, and I would like to try to hit it. And that it is, it, it is fly you have in that floor, It is right? fly. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep. All right. You also see in the center of the room, let me, set, let me establish this properly. In the center of the room is a massive uh, fountain, which is overflowed. It is cracked and ancient. In the corners of the room, you see massive statues, not entirely dissimilar to the statue style you'd seen in the very first room you'd entered, the one with another overflowing fountain. There are three other doors in this room, all blocked with masses of stone. It looks as though this one was trying to restack the stone in this particular direction. And you can also notice there's a slight amount of stone missing from the northernmost door as well. Actually, it is not. Sorry? Actually, it is not fly. It is not. It is fly. not fly. So I take one damage. Okay. Yes. As the room starts to fill with steam, as your heat uh, burns upon the water, you feel the oppression of the water itself, almost as though it is trying to grab a hold of you. Okay. Cool. Um. I am going to get rid of that because, sorry, I was take that off and then, oh, there we go. Um, and I'm going to try to hit it. Does a 15 hit? Uh, 15 hit, yes, just barely, cool. as you see it's it's heavy hide trying to resist. 15 fire magical, max damage. Woo! Oops, I just drew something by mistake. Just a second. Look. I think I just deleted my POV token. No. <laughs> uh, it's one of those days. It's one of those days. All right. Uh, sorry, I've got to grab that from another page to make sure it's got the appropriate traits. And now I realize it's because I was using the wrong keyboard because I have two keyboards in front of me. You need to label them. I need to, I need a lot of things. <laughs> I need an assistant. <laughs> All right. And because I've changed pages, it will take... 16 years to get back to the original page. But as you strike down upon it, uh, you definitely hit. What is the damage? 15. Oh, 15. You're right. It's in there. Uh, it uh, is struck by the damage, screams in pain, which you hear close up, and everybody hears it howling now from the end of the hallway. Clark, you saw the flame uh, flowing in through the, uh, the opening in the doorway and the creature's scream on the other side. It is still alive, I can tell you that much. Well, I would like to make my second attack then. Is that just sure hearing this? Uh, 11, I'm guessing that doesn't hit. It it, uh, le it it pushes itself down into the water and you and you missed swinging overhead of it. Cool. That is, okay. actually, I'm going to use a D8, the first level spell, and heal a little bit. Uh, is that a bonus action? Is that a bonus action? It is a bonus action. Okay. That is my. I will heal the one point of damage that I lost. <laughs> there you go. You just managed to make the water not, not hurt you. I am still trying to load up the, the page. 
<sighs> okay. Wow, it's it's. I can't really show you what I'm seeing, but all I'm seeing is the loading screen. You know how the loading screen has multiple messages on it, the display? Those are now flashing in rapid succession. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like it's really trying to load up. All right. Uh, that is uh, Elzera's turn. I'm rude. Uh, so there's doors on either side of me? There are. It looks like there are, are, um, are stone doors that have, have fallen off their hinges and kind of sitting now just filling the space. Can I just take a quick shove at either of them and see if they're moving or if they're just sitting there? Sure. Make a strength check. Mm. Where did that go? Nope. Unfortunately, the stone, it, it's made of heavy, heavy stone and feels like you're pushing on the wall. Yeah, that's fine. If it feels like it's not moving, then I'm not worried about it. All right. That's kind of all I... Uh, yeah, that's my action for the turn, so i got to wait till next turn to try the other door. Okay. Zakis. I can't see where you are, so I'm going to assume you're... Uh... <laughs> Back to the regular window. Yeah, you're same place I am. Well, I'm yeah, kind of wondering what, what's mm -hmm. in those doors, but everyone seems to have that covered, so I will... Well, you see him shove his shoulder up against the door and it not move. Yeah. We have uh, more pressing issue issues right now. And also, just in case there's another slotty in those doors, I don't really want it to be open. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I'm making sure they won't open behind us. Okay, so 30... Right after this torch thingamajig. Whee! Nope. One more. And then 30 more. So 5, 10, 15. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty. 30. So that was my action. I used it to dash. Now Zachus is tired. His cardio is not his jam. <laughs> All right, and you've run up. I can't see where you are. So where? How far did you get? Oh, um, I'm. Thank you. If you double tap where you are, it should ping. Okay. If you just hold down on the spot, it should too. It says. Yeah, I literally can't see the map at all. So you have to describe it. Uh, so the very top corner where the rubble is, like 20 right. feet from there to the left. There? Okay. Keep in mind Here. that the, uh, oh. the uh, wow, it just crashed Chrome even. Uh, the rubble itself is difficult terrain, so you need to have an additional five feet of movement to move through it. Okay. So I'll move myself back here then. So I'm right in front of Clark. Okay. And from there, you've turned the corner so you can see the end of the hallway where there is that light streaming out through the half-closed uh, half space. You actually see three kinds of light. There's a sort of wan green, there is a soft red, and a brilliant orange red, which is moving a lot, which you suspect is coming from uh, Elzara. All right. All right. Finally, now I think I can... Well, considering how hard the thing just screamed, screamed, I'm assuming Elzara has this wonderfully under control. <laughs> I try. It's entirely possible. All right. Just recreated that. And... Crap. All right. At least I can see now. Uh... Let's see, that was Zach's turn. Clark. Yeah, uh, Clark's going to take a full move, I believe, but before he does. Five, ten, five, ten, five, ten. Hey, there he is. So that's at 30. I'm going to spend a bonus action to dash, which should give me another 30. Uh, five, ten, 20. And as my action, I would like to try to bash down the door. At, All right. At full run. At a full run. 
make a uh, let's see, let's call this an athletics check with advantage. Uh, well, you only need to roll the once because we've got it set for automatically roll uh, advantage. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Take the first one then, please. Indeed, uh, 23, you ram into the door. You notice that the, the calling it a door is probably being a bit generous at this particular ah. point as it seems to uh, be uh, a, a cracked uh, stone door that was once in place. Like the other ones you passed by before, it seems to have fallen off of hinges. Um, for it to have done so probably means it's been uh, uh, here for a very long period of time. You crash into it. The makeshift pile of stones on the other side uh, give way as well, and uh, you shove into the creature which is uh, behind it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I need to... Oh, I still can't actually move anything, because every time I move anything... Uh, however, you do crash into Elzera, who is right there behind the door as well. Uh... So that's a was a D10 fire damage. Yes. All right. Oh, that's a D8. There you go. Six damage. Okay. Six fire damage. Let me see if that helps. With this thing. I think I put it in the wrong layer. All right. Uh, now I can see. Right. Question. So, yeah. I have a little bit of movement left. Does it look like Clark could get to a not fiery space? <laughs> uh, how much movement do you have left? Uh, uh, one moment. Uh, get my handy dandy ruler out here. Can't actually see that. I'm starting here. I can get, uh, see here. Sorry, Maybe I just shifted 90. all of the walls. Anywhere else in the room, I believe, with the dash included. Okay. Okay. Yep. You, can, you can't go straight over because the fountain is in your okay. way. Can I go to one side, say the north? Uh, absolutely. I'm, just gonna sneak in. I'm trying to adjust the light and the entire layer is moving. <laughs> so all of the walls are shifting. That's why you're seeing weird things come up there now. Is that permissible there? I can't tell, so sure. Okay. I'm just to the north of the fountain on the east side. All right. Seems fine to me. And Roll20 is now frozen on two screens. <laughs> All right, then. I don't know how what level of computer I need, but apparently it was more than that. Uh, the creature is on fire still, so the beginning of its turn, it takes fire. Oh, Hey. Right. Uh, oh, I just realized. I'll roll it here because I don't have the space. All right. Uh, as you see it uh, kind of keeping low to the water and the uh, uh, and its, uh, its burn seemed to heal over somewhat. Uh, however, it is not happy about where it is. And this is moving ridiculously slowly. Uh... <laughs> uh, 
one has to laugh because otherwise one would shout repeatedly <laughs> and loudly Right now, Elzera is also blocking me, so I have to show me Elzera at the moment, just just so I can grab the token. There you go. As it attempts to shove by Clark. Um, and that apparently is not going to move for a while. So I will say it makes a couple of attacks. Oh, there you go. As, a, as by means of doing that. It's underneath now. Uh, it's okay. underneath Clark now. I don't know. I can't see anything on that page. So um, I'm just going to go by by memory and by rote. Uh, I don't know if I can even roll, actually. Let's see. Uh, okay. So does a 22 hit Clark yes. as it launches out and um, attempts to uh, chomp down on you. You take nine points of piercing damage. Uh, and then comes in with the left and right claws once more. Let me just put it on there. 25 to hit. Yep, that'll hit. 11 points of slashing damage and make a constitution saving throw, please. One moment. So that would be 71. Con save is going to be that. You feel the claws picking around your armor and um piercing inward, just roughing up your skin as something seems to have been transmitted. You immediately feel your your vigor start to drain. Your maximum hit points are reduced by 10. What? Ouch. Uh, it attempts to strike again. 16 to hit. Uh, 16 will hit. For another 15 points of slashing damage. One moment. Uh, 15 points. Okay. Thank you. And if I can find him... I don't know where my guy went to. Underneath Clark. Oh, he's underneath Clark now. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. <laughs> I couldn't see the page, so I couldn't verify. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I can't seem to... Uh, to there we go. Uh, as he pushes on by you towards the other side of the room. Kind of rolling in the in the water, but not enough to put itself out. Kind of crashes into the stones on that far side. It's not a good day for it. Uh, let's see. Wrong window. <laughs> can I ask a silly question? You certainly can. can. It's no sillier than what I'm doing. Guy. You do. Okay, good. Uh, slap. Unfortunately, he's just a little bit too wily for you and kind of twists and turns just out of reach of the glove. Dang it. That is its turn. Elzera, oh. this is going to be bad. Yes, go for it. I will move five feet in the water, taking one point of damage. Okay. The water's kind of sizzling up around you. Uh, and I will miss. And miss. <laughs> wow. Okay. As you're swinging 11, around 10, it. 10, 9. And wow. the <laughs> there you go. Uh, as it uh, uh, seems desperately trying to claw away at the stone in front of you to get, get through another door. Also, my, uh, my shield has reached me at this point. 
I forgot okay. about my shield going around the uh, the door. But oh yeah, yeah, I'd have a harder time. Kind of, so all this time, there's been this bang, 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 bang. Is just trying to get in the door. Your very loyal shield finally slipping through. <laughs> Once Clark got through, I, I, th mm -hmm. I thought about it, but. All right. Uh, that is your, that's part of your move. You still have more movement left. Um, I might as well join him in his space and take another point of damage from moving another five feet. Okay. And once again, he's engulfed in flame and not happy about it. But then again, who really is ever happy about being engulfed in flame? As you move away, as you move away, uh, you, the water has revealed a large red crystal that seems to be growing out of the floor. Something you wouldn't have noticed because literally you are fire. Um, can I roll some sort of like history check? Does this look like the um, the crystals in the cave in Farhaven? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> um, you can make a history check, yes. Not 20 for 22. Although these are raw, and those ones were a lot of times processed, they do have a similar appearance to them. Cool. Uh, I'm also getting an echo, which is why sometimes I'm stumbling with my own words. Pardon me. Uh, but yes, they do appear to have a similar structure to them, and they do appear to be growing partially out of the water. Okay. Uh, Zakis. I will continue onwards, but this time more carefully, because I'm getting close to danger. <laughs> I think it's me next. Oh, yeah, it should be on Runia. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, uh, I gently push on the other one to see if the stone is stable. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> Delete on the wrong side. No. Um, it is similarly st similarly stable. You can make a um, make a survival roll. As I try to bring back my dot once again. Six. Okay. There's no obvious cause to why this would have happened. Maybe just old age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's as far as I can get. Okay. Uh, Zakis, now it's your turn. All right. Thirty. Uh, the rubble. That's difficult terrain, right? That's right. If I go, if I move thirty feet, so I'll I'll move first. Uh, wow. Way to go, brain. I just like noticed this spot and then forgot about it. Here we go. Okay. So I'm at 30 feet now. Can I see what's going on in there? Like through the rubble? Um, can you ping the map where you are? Because I can't actually see. What's the ping button? <laughs> Just uh, click and hold on the map. There you go. Right here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, now that the the uh, remnants of that stone door have been basically shoved aside by Clark barreling through... Uh, you can see the glow of the water around this broken, uh, overflowing fountain in the center of the room. You can see it's it's backlit by the massive fiery form of Elzera, uh, and you can also see the, make out the faint light red glow from the crystal, which is piled up there. Do I see the Although that's a little harder to see. Uh, yeah, you'd see Clark as well. I mean, do I see the slutty? Um. Fountain you can just barely make out the slotty. There's something that's engulfed in flame right now and desperately moving. That's probably it. All right, great. Gotcha. So I will cast a fireball at that. Firebolt. Okay. Glad you clarified. I, I don't have fireball yet. <laughs> Plus 11. Whee. So that's 22 to hit. That hits. Oh, 
for mediocre damage, that gets resisted also. <laughs> okay. I have to remember roughly where it was. Okay. Okay. No, I mean, I remember its hit points because I can't see it at oh. all. <laughs> <sighs> it's, I'm continually freezing here, so I'm not able to. Also, I, I accidentally moved nothing. my character like over the line, so I'm seeing like a bunch of other map things that I probably shouldn't see. Yeah, please try to keep within the reasonable visible lines, <laughs> just for my own sake. It's like coloring between the lines. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm just ignoring what isn't in the hallway I am in because of my size. Yeah. And the ginormous angry thing in front of you. Yo. But yeah, that was my turn. Ah, there, finally, I've got my, my POV dot back so I can see things. Vision! <sighs> Do -do -do. All right. So I will put it in... There, that is Zacchaeus' turn. Clark, you're up. I'd like to move five foot forward to here. And okay. I would like to strike down this thing, because it's a jerk. <laughs> right now, it's a desperate uh, animal trying not to be burned to death. But yes, a jerk is also pretty accurate. All right. Uh, let's see here. That's a slapping. Don't think either of those hit. Uh, unfortunately, with all the flames going around, you're trying not to stick your hand too deeply into mm. them. And it moving desperately around manages just to evade your hit. Dang. That's it for me. You only have one attack? Oh, I just took the advantage and assumed it was both of them. Oh, okay. I see what you're going to do. Okay. Right? That's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, unfortunately, poking into the fire is 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 proving to be difficult. Yep. All right, now that I can see it again, I should be able to poke it again if it leaves. Um, all right. Just trying to uh, see it again myself. All righty. Uh, beginning of its turn. It's taken fire. Burn, baby, burn. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, and then... Uh, oh, shoot. Okay. All right. Well, it's not as bad off as I had thought it was. Hmm. Okay. Um, despite the surroundings, it's going to continue to try to dig furiously at the wall, at the stones. Uh, let's see. Oh, do I dare move away from this page? Every time I've moved away from this page, it's come back and frozen. Ah, looks like it worked. Yeah, it's barely moving the stones out of the way, but does seem to be, uh, again, as you noticed before, Elzera, um, both resisting a little bit of the fire and also healing at the same time. Okay. Uh, however, it is your turn. Uh, well, I will try to smash. Yeah. All right. Do the smash. 17. Hey, yo. That is a solid smash. As you bash away with one of its hands. Of 11. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you kind of catch one of its hands as it's pulling away desperately these stones, seventeen again. Uh, you smash down on its shoulder. Yep, that hits again. For ten. Uh, uh, each time uh, you strike, it kind of slows it, its motion a little bit, but it is trying still to get, to get away from it. It seems to be paying less attention to you than you might have expected. It's all good. Uh, however, it is slowly diminishing. You staying where you are? Uh, yep, I'm also taking water damage. Water damage. 
Okay, I'm rude. Uh, if I'm flash of fire in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to move up the side tunnel a bit just to see if there's anyone going to attack us from behind. Okay. You see that the tunnel does curve away to the east. Okay, if I don't see anything down there, then uh, I'll ignore it. Nothing at the moment. I, I don't like this at the moment part. <laughs> I promise nothing for your future. Um, I, hmm. Well, Zach is too far away, so I'll just heal me again. Okay. One point. Oh. <laughs> plus mine. Yeah. But I'm done for the turn, anyways. Okay. Zakis? No, plus. You can see it now desperately okay. clawing away at the door, being bashed and stabbed. Well, I will cast a. Eh, yeah. Oh, what the hell? Magic Missile level 2 edit? Okay. Roll your damage. Forty-four plus 4, yes. 11! Magic... Oh, man, those numbers were shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's, um, That's, um... Well, to be fair, it's only a D4, yeah. so 25% chance of 1s, but... Still, twenty five percent chance, bit, of course. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, it takes that much magic magical damage. Okay. And I sadly cross out this is second level spell slot, and I lost my pencil. Awesome. All right, they do solidly hit, kind of dancing around the flames and Clark's extended glaive, uh, hitting solidly up its back, foom, 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 foom. and then uh, you see it kind of uh, cry out once more in pain and agony as it tries to sort of twist in its space. Uh, but it lives still. Are you moving? Or nope. bonus action? I'm just okay. sitting there, like, out of the way, kind of. Clark. Uh, I would like to spend zero charges as a bonus action. And, uh, spend zero charges? Yeah, and I'm going to extend the uh, length of the glaive by another five feet. Okay. Um as it straightens out. Alzara, you see from this close, uh, the fire f light from your being mm -hmm. does not illuminate the, the blade. It is still a pure shadow. Weird. That's kind of cool. Uh, then I'd like to thrash about and try to kill the dude. All right. Well, it's also thrashing about. Your thrashing is a bit more effective, however. Correct. Uh, both hit. Uh, okay. So let's try this. And this. As you extend the blade and the shadow grows far beyond the length of the ha the heft of this, how do you kill this oh, thing? I just imagine it's a poke right on through. Boop. And you poke right on through, and you even feel a little touch of stone as the edge of the blade hits the, the stone it was so desperately trying to get rid ah. of. And then... It dies, Excellent. thrashing wildly, and then being first consumed by the flames, and then you also see the body start to dissolve. Yeah. Eat that, you warming however, motherfucker! <laughs> however, as the body dissolves, the parts that are not burned away from the flame that are still in the water mm -hmm. seem to seep into the water itself. And you can follow a little bit of it as it moves through the water in the opposite direction of where you would expect. Instead of flowing outward with the water from the fountain, it flows inward towards the fountain. What a jerk. Do I take its soul? Uh, oh, yeah. I thought I forgot about that. Uh, you do gain a, uh, a charge. Yeah, I, can't, I can't gain any charges. Sorry. Ah, well. Then you feel the tug of it, but then it rele it was released as the weapon is seated. Hooray! Victory! 
<laughs> Indeed, victory. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading. We've got somebody in the chat. I have no idea who this is, but welcome. Hello. In the chat. <laughs> oh, and the chat just closed on me. <laughs> We're having technical issues at the moment. I, I'm having all the issues. Well, the map just disappeared. There's a cat. Hey, kitty. <laughs> yep. Because that wasn't supposed to come up either. That's perfect. How did how did how did that even happen? <laughs> oh, I see. There, that should restore it. Don't open a second window over your map. That's just basically what I've learned. What I learned. Today, right, this what moment, I just learned it's it's easier for me to have y'all on sound in the hangout and then have the Twitch open as visual. Yeah. See everyone. I'm 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 it's possible. <laughs> right. When I have the two two screens open, Pat and Mark and Nax are cut out. Yeah, that, that happens unfortunately. I have noticed that before. So all right. So now I'm going to type in here welcome. That was a lot of work. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, you managed to chase down the second of these two creatures and burn it to death, basically, as much. I think the first one died. Uh, but now you find yourself in this strange room. A strange green illumination seems to come from the water itself, uh, which is, while burning away in contact with Elzera, still flowing outward from the fountain. And also on the other side of the room, there is a reddish crystal, which seems to have sprung up in this place as Elzera had uh, in her mind, although not actually said it because no one else can understand her in this form. I can. Uh, right. Oh, right. You do speak, uh, uh, what do we call it? Primordial. Um, primordial, yes. I uh, still had it was just a crossing thought, but... Yeah. There's a look upon the fire elemental as though it may have thought something. I'm assuming, like, when the, uh, the creature dies, we all kind of congregate in that room oh shit. Like smaller so that i fit in this corner square that doesn't have water on it uh if i could move your thing i would do so yes we will presume that has happened because <laughs> once again that screen has frozen whoops can i go in uh, well? so stepping into the water do i have a choice can i hop over it uh, it's over three quarters of the room, but you can kind of step gingerly around it if you want. And there's a statue, so I'll just kind of like grab that for balance and be really careful. And uh, oh, there I am. In the that sounds like an acrobatics roll uh -oh. to me. Okay, let's roll acrobatics then. <laughs> I forget what I have for acrobatics. I believe it's plus one. Yep. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> I do a little flourish as I land. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, you managed to grab onto the statue. Holding it up close, uh, it is a life-size dwarven warrior statue in full dwarven plate. It looks to be carved out of fine stone and still in reasonably good shape, although the water is licking at its feet. And you kind of swing around and deposit yourself in the room. Amrun, are you coming into the room or are you going to stay outside? Um, yeah, I'm heading forward. Okay. Is that the only statue in the room? There are statues in each corner of the room. I stop, the in, front of, Oriented I stop in front of the flames. And okay. look around and see like if anyone needs over. assistance. Probably. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think most of you are looking pretty ragged. Yeah, it's breathing regularly. I'll wait till the fire moves. I, like I said, I'm in this corner here. Okay. So, I just can't shrink my avatar. I can rotate it. Yeah, I can't do. It. I I can normally shrink it, but I can't grab anything yep. right now because that screen is frozen. Um, yeah, I will, uh, do another Cure Wounds. Beyond Zacchaeus. Uh, what the 
heck? Make it a level two. Whee! Uh, hmm. Well, <laughs> add three to that, so seven. We are not rolling Thank you. today, folks. As you regather yourself and stand around this this uh, fountain, you can hear the steady gurgle of water flowing out from it. The water does seem to be not making it very far. There are cracks in the stone here. Each of these doors look like they were barred up, strangely, from the inside. Where did the body go? Clark will point. Uh, her first there, and then into bits, and then over there. And he'll point at the fountain. In the fountain. Oh, that's not good. I'm wondering if that's what's poisoning the water supply. If there is a water supply that's poisoned somewhere. Expo did say that if we ingested it, we can get we can get infected. Maybe that's how the first group got inf infected. And I'll look at the crystal and uh, yeah, does that look familiar? Make your history right. check. History is... Oh, no, 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 no. Windows Media Player, go away. <laughs> Tried to change Windows. <laughs> History is a plus 10. Wow. I guess I'm a little shaken up from uh, almost getting killed and infected by those gross worm creatures. <laughs> Oh, Max, you can just click on history on the thing and it'll automatically roll it. Where is it? <laughs> on your, character, on your sheet, character sheet. Just where the skill name is. If you mouse over, it should turn red. Oh, the character sheets. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. So I just roll this. Oh, nice. It just does it. Yep. I ignore that second roll, though. <laughs> same huh, same wow. role, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> Destined not to have any further information, but you do look at it. It does look remarkably similar, but then again, it's a crystal. They all look rather similar. Yeah. similar. Uh, Mark, uh, the mm -hmm. sun is coming right in on your camera. You are a big pink blob right now. <laughs> oh, that's oh. awesome. That's perfect. That's what I wanted to be. I, I want to see this. Hold on. Oh, he changed it. <laughs> <clears throat> Arun, are those like the crystals that were in a Thylestra's cave in Farhaven? Feels I, like it. I don't know. Are they growing out of a pile of bones? No, but they're growing out of... They do not. Have... Something Sorry? foul. I couldn't make out what you said, Mark. Oh. They're growing out of something that looks foul. If you take a closer look. Um, no, I'm staying out of the water for now. Okay. As far as you can see, they're just growing out of the ground. No, no, no. The water pooling around them. Um, I wonder. Can Clark will say, fine, I'll get it. And he'll move over here. Here. And pick up the the crystal if you can. Well, it sounds it sits about a foot and a half tall, and it's a cluster of oh. crystals. Well, then he'll have to. You can give yeah. it a try. See if you can. Okay. Give me, a, give me a. Give me a strike check. I'd love to. I guess, uh, I guess it would just this here then. You can just click on the word strength on the character. Yeah, sheet. that's a save. Oh, there we go. Bonk. Oh. Ooh, there you go. It takes you a moment to kind of wrench it free. It does feel like it's rooted, strangely enough. And as you kind of pull and your muscles strain and you weave it back and forth and shake a little bit, suddenly it comes free from the floor. And you can see that uh, as you pull it upward, there's small tendrils of crystal that extend to the water that break off when you pull it out. Uh, when you do so, it fades to darkness. As if the whatever pale illumination it had came from its connection, maybe to the water. Okay. Hmm. No, it's, it's heavy. Yeah, it's not like the cave ones. It's 
cargo handler to It's heavy somebody. for its size, though. Mm -hmm. The crystal is heavy for its size. Oh, okay. I'll inspect the crystal a little closer now that it's out of the water. <laughs> is that an investigation? Or... Okay. Um, that would be... Well, what are you looking for? It could be survival if you're looking at stones. It could be, okay. I guess, arcana to try to figure out why it was glowing. Let's do arcana because that's, I guess, it's jam. All right, then. Have I read anything about this kind of crystal at the library? You, like, using previous knowledge I have about crystals. I don't know if you can actually fail these rolls anymore. Don't jinx it. Oh, well, <laughs> there's a not-so-great roll, but... There you go. Uh, as uh, are you holding on to the crystal yourself? Are you letting uh, Clark hold on? To I'm it touching it, but I'm not holding on to it because it's pretty heavy, and I'm probably gonna like drop it on my toe and cause bludgeoning damage or something. Okay, so Clark, I see, is getting you to hold yeah. on to it, getting you to do all the heavy work. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's... sounds like a Zacchaeus thing to do. As he turns it over and you start looking at it, you're tapping at it a few times to to hear its ring and. Uh, noticing that the glow has kind of faded. Now it's almost translucent uh, in its color. Uh, there's just the faintest red left in it. Uh, it very much looks like the style of crystal you'd seen before. Um, the power crystals, essentially, that were in the caves way back when, uh, in the caves uh, just off of Farhaven. Uh, those, though, seem to draw their power from, uh, from life itself or the remnants of life. Thinking about it, Maybe even souls? We never really did many experiments there, but it did seem to crop up yeah. out of bones. Uh, these do sim have some similar structure, but there's no sign of any body anywhere near here. The water itself, though, still retains a bit of its glow, and perhaps it was feeding the crystal. Um, given that role, and kind of as you're examining it, uh, one of the things you, you also think is that the crystals before grew up in a place of very unusual energy while the crystal around the uh, crystal and the crystal caves themselves was more or less normal these special crystals uh, seem to grow up in response to extra powerful entities or energy something like that they weren't natural as such they indicated something yeah. else so i can tell it's definitely not natural and it's like some kind of properties of that water that was giving it whatever power it had so I'll just Very explain likely. all these findings to my teammates. And I'll pick up a vial of that water. Okay. Um, make a sleight of hand roll. As you dip the vial into the water. Character sheet, where did you go? Zacchaeus. You can also make the character sheet a separate oh. window, which might make it a little easier to okay. see. Yeah, if you do the little uh, <laughs> upper left corner by your name, there's like a picture-in-picture -picture sort of button. Yeah, got it. Okay, yeah. The water proves to be somewhat unlike water that you're expecting. It almost acts more like a gel. And as you pour some in it and then bring the, uh, the uh, vial up to try to tip it off and fill, you notice that it starts to pour out of the vial, even though the vial is, st is standing upward. It takes you a little bit of effort to kind of balance and then quickly put the stopper on the top. Um, and then as you hold it in there, it does not seem to act like water so much as it's oriented towards the, the uh, body of water below. So as you turn it and twist it around, it always maintains orientation towards it, even though that would kind of put it upside down okay it's trying to get back to the fountain yeah water is probably a living thing of some sort maybe it's like an elemental stuff in the last room did it too and if the creature just dissolved and a lot of creepy crawlies just went back into the water that's not good seem good how much is this thing worth I have no idea. Who you? We'd have to figure out what it does first. It might be more useful to us. Yeah. 
You do know that some crystals hold powers or can be used in spells. Maybe this has some special effect for that. You're not sure. Without research. Yeah, uh, I'm just assuming I'm going to sell it on the market. <laughs> we we have a person in Farhaven who might be interested in it. All right. Well, at the very least, we'll be able to. My last rose temple. So. Do one of you have one of those magic bag things? Mm hmm. I think Emran has the working one. Yep. Clark, yep. will hand it over. Um, hmm. Which bag do I want to put it in? That crystal didn't have any, like, dimensional kind of abil abilities, does it? <laughs> Just remembering the other thing yeah, that happened in Far Haven. I don't have uh, uh, Detect Magic memorized, so I can't uh, tell. I can guess it as a ritual. Mm. If you give me 10 minutes or so to prepare, I can identify more about it. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, we have nothing else to do right now, so I might as well just do that. Just as a reminder, one of the reasons you came down here with some urgency is there were a couple of the orcs that had still not Oh, returned. right, right. Ur now, while you do know that you just encountered a couple of those creatures which might have been transformed orcs, you don't know if the rest are living gotcha. or dead. We can keep the identifying, or we, we can perform research later, I suppose. Um, for on our way here, did any of the doors look uh, disturbed? Uh, the few that you saw did not seem to look disturbed, but you saw a couple that which were collapsed uh, stone and others which you didn't try. You also do know that the front door, after you came in, sort of sealed itself and shook off dust as it sealed itself, which might mean that it's always dusty. Fair enough. Um, I don't know where to go from here, honestly. Uh, hmm. So many options. You could check the other doors. There might be something valuable or something useful. Everyone's going to try something. Okay. Uh, well, everyone's thinking that this water seems to be living. Yeah, Zach is too, actually. I'm also uh, wondering if it's flammable, but we know what happened the last time. Well, I, why don't you guys just talk to each other rather than okay. thinking in your heads? <laughs> so this is a conversation, then. Sure. Um Anyways, uh, Emron is going to use uh, Siphon Life to see if he can drain life out of the water and heal his friends. Okay. Cool. okay. How, much are you... How much are you attempting to take? Um, well, he's got 13 dice, or he'll try 13 dice. <laughs> okay. You cast a spell and the tendrils go out and attach themselves to the water and make the roll on how much you're attempting to move. Let's see. Hmm. I guess I will have to do this as multiple sets. Uh, there's five, so 18. Another five, so 31 total. 39 total, potentially. Okay. Uh, the last ones are D4s for a reason? Mm. No, no. They're supposed to be 3D6. Unless it slid along the wrong line. Uh, instead of that, okay, so 42. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. 28. Okay. As you send out these tendrils to try to absorb its power, take its life from it, something doesn't feel quite right, and you see the greenish glow start to creep up along the tendrils. Thinking quickly, you cancel the spell as you feel the drain happening in the other direction. Roll 1d6. Mm. Oh, that's a 3. You take six points of necrotic damage. Okay. And I take it that used up that yes. channel. Okay. Yes. You open up the channel to it, and instead of finding what you suspected was life, you found, in fact, almost the entirety of death. 
and it feeds on life. What just happened? Um, and you see the, the, the small tendril, small spit of light green traveling back up his channels, and he flinches a bit as little dark spots appear on his face. That doesn't look good. I think I contacted anti-life. So, death? Entity? Nope. No, death is different. This is the opposite of life. Uh, what did you try to do? I tried to drain life from the water to you guys uh, to heal you. I don't think it has any life. It absorbs life. So whatever so don't sent properties it has right now could be due to whatever life it's already consumed? Uh, I think it's just an endless pit of, uh, of life sucking. Uh, you really don't want to be standing in that water. No. Well, I figured out that much already. Uh, mm. you hard looks up from his puddle. You know how you cured the orcs with a, by restoration? Could you purify this water by restoration or purify the water, the water in general? I doubt it um i don't well for one i don't think it's actual water so i don't think my magic for purifying water is going to do much and if it's not living i'm pretty sure i can't cleanse it of disease either hmm. um i can I'm, I'm pretty sure what we're doing is it's getting into people and we're cleansing it out of people but in this case it's not in a people to cleanse so the slutty were not these creatures, it's this substance or whatever it is. I wonder if it's flammable. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, sure. As you I was look standing. over and see like, some everyone of Everyone steps 20 feet down the hallway, of... go ahead and try. <laughs> yeah, I suppose mean, I'll be standing in it. <laughs> yeah, as the ball of fire that is uh, Fire Zera. Uh, kind of hovers over, or actually stamps, I guess, in the, the edge of the water. Uh, you do see some of it sort of roiling backwards, almost uh, pulling away from it, but not being consumed by it. If anything, it seems to also be draining life out of out of uh, Fire Zera. Uh, El Zera, you might want to move. I, I'm in a corner, not touching it. Or... Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cause I, I... But you know how some things, when they, they look like they're curling up and burning, it's almost the inverse effect of that, where instead of curling up and burning, it's like it's sort of pulling that, that flame and that heat away from okay. it, away from her. Uh, Clark, you do look down at the puddle around your feet, mm. and you don't know what they're talking about because it just feels like slightly slimy, thick, slow-moving water. This one doesn't burn my boots as much? Clark, are you standing in the water? Yeah, there's a room full of water here. What do you want? Uh, you might want to not stand in the water. It's dangerous. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Did those things hit you? Uh, Clark tries to find a little dry spot here where this looks to be a skeleton or something is. And as you kind of step over to it, you realize, yes, half concealed in the water itself is a dwarven yeah. skeleton, picked completely clean of all flesh. It moves slightly, but then you realize that's probably because you're standing yeah. by it. Does it have any stuff on it? It appears to be nothing okay. but bone. Not even like metal or anything? If you want to take a closer look at it, you can dig around and if you want. To. Okay, make an investigation sure. check. Make sure you don't touch the water with your hands. Yeah, whatever. Uh, are you getting into yeah, it with your Clark's hands? Yeah, Clark's got to get dirty. He'll get dirty. Okay. The uh, the, the water feels slightly slimy, uh, and again, but uh, kind of almost like very thin jello. Uh, it seems to have coated the bones somewhat. But as you pull the bones clear of the water, there's there's nothing but small bits of fabric, um, long ago faded, little little threadbare things. You do find a uh, short sword kind of underneath the bones. 
Uh, it appears to be in decent condition, but it's not a fancy sort of short sword at all. Does it look more recent? Uh, that's to me. Well, everything everything that Elzera is saying is being translated yeah. by Zion. <laughs> yeah, but, but but I I'm seeing this as well. Does it look okay. like a more um, recent style or? Make a history check. I mean, a short sword is kind of a short sword is kind of a short sword. There's nothing particularly fancy about it. It doesn't look like it was a, a, a ornamented at all. It doesn't look like it's damaged. It doesn't look like it's in bad shape, but it's also been stuck in this stuff for who knows how long. So it's definitely not water if it doesn't cause any like rust damage to that metal. Mm. Hard to say. Or it could have not been in the water long enough to... Who wants this? Clark will point the sword around. What oh, was that sword? Yeah. Hmm. Not me. What did you say though? I missed part of what you said. Would you like a sword? I'm good. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll inspect it. Like, is there anything weird about it? Like, looks pretty plain to me. Yeah, and as you hold it, the only thing weird is the slight residue of whatever that stuff was that uh, that uh, seems to still be attached to it, coating it almost like a slime of oil. You take one point of necrotic damage Ow. as it kind of stings your fingers. Stings. And Clark seems to be unaffected by this. Clark knows how to hold seems a sword. <laughs> the entire thing is slimy. It's not about how, how you hold a sword. I wasn't holding it by the sharp end. And I'll ask Clark, well, Clark, does that slime not sting your feet or hurt, or hurt your hands? It doesn't seem to burn my boots as much as the other stuff did. I'll just gently touch the water with a, with a tip of my boot. What happens? Okay. What kind of boots uh, are you wearing? I'm assuming like basic boots. Made out yeah. of leather? Okay. Um, as you step in on the uh, in the water, just kind of pushing your foot slightly in it, it doesn't seem to have any effect. And you pull the boot back out, and you can see, see now the bottom of the boot is par is pitted and scarred. And Clark's boot isn't? Oh, I imagine they are. Okay. <laughs> I mean, his boots are always pitted, pitted and scarred. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. He was recently also on fire. Yeah. Are you okay? Uh when fighting that creature, did it hit you? Uh, Clark looks over at his scars and says, probably. It, it seemed to have the ability to infect you with something, probably whatever the orcs have. Are you feeling okay? Uh, Everyone, you should check it out. Okay? Uh, you are feeling a bit rough. Um, there's a sort of low level feeling in the back of your gut, uh, kind of like you're about to be sick, like about to throw up, but it's never quite manifested in full full amount. Um, your armor feels a little bit heavier in general. Your bones are aching a little bit. Uh, it's like you've been working really, really hard or aged quite a bit. So you do feel a bit run down. My mind is clear. My body is hungover. But none of us are drinking. Uh, Amarun, could you check him out real quick? Yeah. Uh, actually, the reason I don't have detect magic is because I have detect poison and disease, cool. uh, which I'm going to cast. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Concentration up to 10 minutes, sense the presence and kinds of poisons, poisonous creatures, or disease within 30 feet. Blocked by three feet of wood or dirt, one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, or a thin sheet of lead. Too many screens again. Uh, yes, you cast the spell. What's the range on the spell? 30 feet. Okay. Um, cast the spell, look over, and it strike you right away. The in the faint greenish glow coming from the water registers on the edge of disease. It's almost as though you're seeing it, say, shadowed by 
uh, a, a glazed window. It's not distinct or direct, but somehow related. As you look over at Clark, uh, you see a, uh, uh, a distinct greenish patch just in between a couple of the, the parts of his armor, uh, which follows a wound. And you can see, even as you're watching, it grow somewhat larger. P.S. He's not wearing armor. Oh, no armor? Mm -hmm. No, no he hasn't had armor. any armor. Then around uh, his jacket, then. Okay. Okay. That water is full of disease, and Clark is infected. Right. Yep. And I point uh, to the spot. You uh, take care of it? Uh, if Clark wants to come over, sure. Or make some room. You can walk over towards the door, stepping over this pile of stones, which is, is uh, piled up in front of it. Knocked over, but still there. Ah! <laughs> Clark was inside me momentarily. Um, <laughs> yes, and I will... Uh, lesser restoration to end a disease. As before, you cast the spell and feel resistance. Roll an Arcana check. Uh, is it Arcana or spellcasting? Uh, sorry, it's a spell. Yeah, spellcasting roll. Uh, I'm going to find something that's actually got my spellcasting roll without any boosts. Uh, okay. This attack roll could do it. We have plus eight. Yeah. 24. Okay. Uh, as you kind of thrust through with the spell, uh, even though that's surprising resistance had happened, you can still sense the, the, uh, the, uh, disease kind of actively moving around, trying to move away from where you're putting your pressure and spell. It seems to try to squirm around behind a rib or possibly around some organs. Inside you, uh, Clark, you feel this sudden activity uh, with a little bit, perhaps, of trepidation uh, as the spell seems to be trying to grapple a hold of this thing. But within a few seconds, you finally thrust and the uh, disease is crushed and d diminishes entirely. Within you, Clark, you finally feel that sense of release, your shoulders untense, uh, and the uh, limit on your hit points has been removed. Ooh. Ah. All right, then. Um, I take it he's cured. Clark pats his belly. No longer yeah. He should be. Um, hmm. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work on the water, though. Would Pelexia be able to do anything? If you were if you were to reach out to her? Yeah. It's, uh... I've got that back. Um... Yeah. Amrun will, uh... go into a prayer meditation. Okay. And uh, reach out to Paluxia. Asking mm -hmm. her to... Hmm. Asking her to remove that which taints the well in front of me. Okay. And... Nope. As you sit there and reach outward, all of you can kind of see a faint blue aura surrounding um, Amrun for a moment or two. And as you appeal and reach out, you get a weird sense as you do so. A sense of cloudiness and a weird sense of familiarity that comes from you. And there's a, there's a, a notion of a one waterway feeding into another, like an ocean feeding into a river. And as you 
ask for this this divine favor to be granted, you get a sense almost of a, um, somewhere between disappointment and uh, uh, sadness at not being able to do as you ask. Almost regret. Hmm. No. I don't think she can affect this. Make a religion check. Anybody listening or just Amrun? Just Amrun. Okay. 24. As you think on this and the implications this might have on a on the level of the gods and level of of, of worldly or beyond worldly things, the sense of familiarity nags at you. And some of the stories that you've collected and found and seen along the, the walls, the histories that have been related about Paluxia and the ancient times start to flood back to you. And you start to think about how Paluxia in many of those depictions had been shown as a doorway or shown as a shepherd allowing transition between different places. And given what you're experiencing and given this parasitic invasion of these Sladi in a form that is remarkably similar to what you had seen along the um, Greybrook in the shadow, you start to make a connection. I think this she is... accidentally brought them here. Oh. Paluxia. Uh, well, um, if we can get rid of them, I'm sure we won't tell anyone, right? Uh, was it an accident? I'm assuming it was an accident, right? It seems to be something she regrets, so accident or not. Yeah. Um, well, we should probably find the people we're after. Yes. Um, anyone know how to track them? Because no, I'm kind of lost here. I mean, the only thing I can think of is trying all the doors at this point. That sounds smart. Uh, considering this thing was racing down the hall with a uh, not much care earlier, I'll see if I can find one of the footprints that it made, and maybe like if I can find additional footprints like that, track them down somewhere. Like, did it leave footprints? Um, well, you can take a look, make a survival check. Oh, red. As your bookly mage decides to break out his ranger gear. He does that survival train because he read about it in a book one time. So you read this mystery story in which they looked really, really close at the ground. They had a, a, a magnifying glass. Wait, what? So you uh, I rolled a nine, think... I got a 25. How does that work? The 25 would have been with advantage. Uh, yeah. Okay. Nine is the total yeah, roll. Nine. If you have look... over it, it breaks down what the roll is. Okay. Uh, as you kneel down in the, in the hallway, starting to look for footprints, um, a couple of things strike you. You don't have a magnifying glass, which is rather <laughs> frustrating. Also, there are a lot of footprints uh, here. Minor conjuration, I'll summon a magnifying glass. Okay. Uh, after that frustration is over, we should bring out this magnifying glass and start looking at the dirt more closely. Uh, you realize that this is actually all a uh, very well-made cobble that uh, is along here. Um, and it's survived for a long time. This is a style you haven't seen uh, in many of the, the books. Um, you haven't actually made it into uh, Demarak or into uh, uh, Dren, but uh, you imagine that this wouldn't be very un uh, dissimilar to some of the floors they have there. It clearly shows dwarven making, and it's, it kind of uh, you know, shows a lot of quality. The stones are very well set together and very carefully placed, even though there must be millions of stones down here. Um, you also do find several footprints, and then quickly start eliminating all of your own footprints, and then the fact that fire recently moved down this hallway and probably cleansed a lot of what was actually here, and then conclude... I'm not going to be able to find any footprints here. Damn it. Well, it was worth a shot. 
You, those books that you read were probably lying. No one could have possibly done this. Hmm. We have a mystery on our hands. Can it anybody reference nice. that I'm somehow missing? <laughs> I mean, the footprints were covered earlier, so. I have a question to the GM. Yes? Do orcs wear footwear? And if so, what sort? Uh, some orcs wear footwear. Uh, hashtag not all orcs. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it really depends upon uh, the season and conditions, but most do not. Right. You have no idea if the orcs were down here for foot, wore foot uh, gear. Let's. Uh, well, I should probably go back. I disappeared for the while. Sorry. I'll come back. Hmm? Eh. Or... All right. Uh, there. Clark says, uh, we may not need to be looking for boots. Why, why, why not? Because not everybody wears boots. Hashtag not all boots. In, in this weather, it's freezing. Not down here, it's not. Well, I suppose. Um, in fact, the temperature is pretty moderate here. I mean, also, you have a fire nearby, but... Without fire, um, I mean... <laughs> Well, shall we investigate the other doors? Yup. Okay. What was that? Yup. Are you looking around this room too? Uh, let me get back to the room. I was thinking some of the ones we missed. Yeah. Well, I, I... Uh, the two doors back there, uh, they were pretty stuck. Uh, we could try forcing them open if you want. Possibly, if it's not, if it doesn't take too long. Um, as you discuss this in the room, uh, let's have Zakis and Firezera make uh, perception checks. Whoa. 15. 15. Back to rolling fit. <laughs> Zacchus. Oh wow! Yeah, Zacchus <laughs> is too. Zacchus is actually uh, more involved with the stonework now that he's looking at it, thinking, "Wow, you know, some of these floors must have been really amazing in their day." I'm the fact that they have held up this well for this many minutes time, however much time there's been, you know, this probably is going way, way back. This is a very old. It gets caught in that, that line of thinking for a while. Uh, Fire Zara, as you're kind of trying to avoid the water, you're keeping an eye on it. And notice that the water the water flows somewhat under and around the rocks to the to the northern door, which is blocked off. You also kind of look around and realize all four of the doors in this room were blocked off from the inside. And there's a skeleton sitting over there, leading you to think that whoever blocked this off also died in here. We might want to leave this room. I agree with that entirely, but I also wonder where that creature was going if if he was trying to dig through a wall. Are they using this area as some kind of base? Ooh, hot foot, hot foot. What? Uh, I go around people. <laughs> and take three damage for the, the wire. Okay. I all left my point of view dot behind, so I'll move it. Where are you going? We can we can move quickly to that location if you want. Yeah. Yeah, we might as well just go back down the hallway from where we came. Inspect yeah. some doors. Inspect some doors. So we have, sorry, I'm just moving around. Ah, there we go. There's my bar. Um, so I think we missed a door down here. There's these two. There was a dead end. There was a hallway there. Okay. My computer is freezing again, so I'm trying to follow where you are. Okay. So from where I was at the beginning, mm -hmm. there's a door in, if I were to have gone straight, correct? If 
you were to have gone straight in the first hallway, yes. Yep, yeah. there's a doorway there. Um, and then there were two where I stopped at first. Yep, those ones were both solid stone and seem to have shifted down into their into the door wells. And then there was the hallway there. So I would say let's start trying to go to the first one first. Seems legit. Sorry, I had a pop-up now come up. Jeez. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. have all the technology and all of it's going wrong at the same time. <laughs> all right. So you're going back down to that doorway? First door first. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Give me 20 minutes while I change the map. Because <laughs> <laughs> it seems like that's how much time is taking. The door appears to be uh, made of uh, iron-bound wood. The wood, remarkably, is still in decent shape. Uh, almost as though it must have been preserved. Uh, it feels heavier than uh, just normal wood. Uh, but the door does not appear to be locked. I let someone with hands open the door. I'll let somebody who's not squishy open the door. <laughs> That's I'll open the door. <laughs> All right. Okay. The door opens, revealing a hallway that, legit, I may have to take 20 minutes to put up the other map, which is kind yeah. of... I mean, really it's talk, do we want to take like a 10 minute break? Uh, we could, yep. So I will end the broadcast. I'll reconnect the broadcast here in, a, let's say, what time we have now. Just about six, let's say 6.15 Atlantic Standard Time. So okay. about 17 minutes from now. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. And we're now streaming again. Welcome back, folks. We're having a few more technical issues than I like. Uh, I don't know. Do I ever like any technical issues? That might be a kind of redundant statement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I am rebooting and, and reconnecting things, so I figured I'd better uh, talk to you guys. We better reconnect at least. Let you know we're not completely dead, that nothing happened. The crater that is my laptop is just making me frustrated but uh, thank you for st sticking with us if you're watching this on youtube no time passed it's kind of peculiar that way we also have done away with the opening titles and closing titles just to uh make it a little bit faster and now steam is starting up and asking me if you want to take a hardware survey no no just go away go away uh we are transitioning to this this roll 20 stuff if you have suggestions about how we can make it better um, the model that i've followed so far comes from uh, someone who i respect who's managed to make this work which is christiane ellis uh, i have a feeling that she has a more powerful machines than i do <laughs> than uh, what i'm doing um, so getting new hardware at the moment isn't really an option um, but uh, hopefully this combination of things uh, will will work out at least but you can uh, let us know about any of those suggestions um, you can uh, join our Facebook group, Watchers of the Drowned Isle, or uh, like the page, Legends of the Drowned Isle. I know I'm, st I'm stealing your thunder here, Marie. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm rambling. Um, at the end, she does it much more uh, expertly than I do. Uh, the, uh, but you can join either the Watchers of the Drowned Isles for discussions or Legends of the Drowned Isles to find out what's happening and when we plan to uh, stream again. We're looking to get back to... Uh, weekly streaming. This is the second in a row, so uh, technically that means it's a series again. <laughs> um, but we are also putting up all of our videos on YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1, that's NCAF1, that's me. Uh, look for the uh, Legends of the Drowned Dials or Legends of Omatia. I have uh, two different uh, playlists there because even if the Drowned Isles storyline somehow peters out or we end this particular game, uh, we'll probably return to this because I've built way too much stuff in this and I need to make sure I actually use it uh, at some point. Don't so we're, we're um, hurry for a party wipe, don't worry. <laughs> well, no, you guys are pretty powerful at this point, so uh, uh, it's it's more likely it's it's a map wipe where all of my creatures just decide to fall over and leave you guys alone for a while. Great, we win. Um, you win D and D. You win D and D. Uh, so slowly the map is coming back to shape here. 
I don't know why that looks the way it does, but um, there we go. Okay. Hey, maybe this might actually work. So you have opened up this doorway. Now these um, these uh, uh, hallways, as I've tried to stress a couple of times, are only five feet wide. So it is single file for the most part going through. Uh, what order are you going through just so I can make sure I set it up properly on the other map? I'm probably going last because that's how I I'll be behind it. whoever opens the door. Okay. That'll put me in third place then. Uh, you're muted, uh, Pat. Shit, am I muted too? I can... Nope. Nope. I can I can hear everybody else. Uh, yeah, I'm first. Okay. And all right. Oh, it is all frozen again. <laughs> so, what I will describe as you open up the doorway is another a dark hallway. Um, there is a little bit of dust settled on the floor here, uh, but uh, as you move through. Uh, uh, Zakis has been intently trying to see if any sort of footprint can be found every once in a while, re-examining the floor with his conjured uh, 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 magnifying glass and noticing, first of all, that uh, this door has been opened recently uh, because the amount of dust that has been blown away from it is more than what you guys just introduced. Okay. Um, so. so somebody's been using it recently that wasn't us? <laughs> Well, the door was unlocked as well. Okay. And uh, as you kind of move through it, you do actually, uh, uh, Amrun would notice, the door is weighted to close itself. So uh, probably as a safety measure or something like that, the way that, or maybe just it was built that way or accidentally built that way, but the weight is angled in such a way where the door will actually close itself behind you. And I'm assuming it doesn't lock behind us? It wasn't locked before. Okay. Still waiting for so I rebooted everything and I'm still waiting. So life is fun. Wait again. Yes, I'll wait again. No. So in the meantime, oh, we've lost uh, Elzara anyway. Oh no. <laughs> uh, let's all tell everybody a little bit about our characters. Let's 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 do this. We haven't done this for a while, and I think it's uh, worth checking in, especially because I got a delay anyway. Well, this thing. Uh, <laughs> does what the hell it's going to do. So, um, why don't each of you, as an interesting role-playing challenge, I want you to each relate some some little story about your character when they were a child. Some little moment that you would have shared, potentially, while you guys have been traveling on the road. You've all traveled together for quite some time now, several uh, months, I think, at this point, uh, and would have had plenty of time to relate a story or two so I want you each to relate a little story. It's still a little role-playing ch challenge for the folks at home and for each of you. Uh, who wants to go first? I won't make you go uh, first if you if you want to go last, but if everybody wants to go last, somebody's going to go first. <laughs> would, it doesn't have to be signal. I wrote you one and you demanded it wasn't canon. <laughs> the first thing that comes uh, to mind is actually like the one that you made for, for the character uh, that you told on Ruin. Stuff like that. Um, okay. The stubbornness and the, was it the crayons? No, it was, or... I decided to like make my own garden. Oh, right. Uh, right. Cause you were told to, um, so growing up, my mother, this is a story that, um, my character's mother told Emeryn is that Elzara was wanting to be able to have her own section of the greenhouse um and she was told no so she made her own garden in the backyard uh in anyway just because she was just like no i'm doing this <laughs> so and failing miserably because just it was it wasn't a good land to plant things on but how did her mother respond to that eventually uh she eventually gave her the rose section of the the greenhouse well, that's one of her favorite places. All right. That's a nice story. Who wants to go next? I suppose Zachis can go next. Okay. Uh, before he got a job at the library, or before his parents got him a job at the library, <laughs> uh, well, Zachis' family are politicians. So, and Zachis' sibling are, is a politician. So, Zachis obviously is not a politician with a, with a charisma score of 
you know, modifier of plus zero. And, uh, yeah, any efforts to make him go into politics has just never been very successful. He was more of a bookish kind of half-elf. And one at one point, that, that, that was, it would have been in his, like, teenage years, so, like, say, 15 years old-ish. Even that's young by half by half elf standards, but he uh, somehow got his hands on a scroll of or a book, some kind of information about the unseen how to summon an unseen servant. And it didn't come quickly at first, but eventually, without telling anybody, he learned the spell, and all of his chores started getting done a lot faster while he was doing something else. Eventually, he was found out, but uh. Yeah, it was a nice, fun time of Zacchaeus not doing as he was told while pursuing his own interests while his work was still getting done. And if you recall, Unseen, Unseen Servant is still something he used at the library for the exact same purpose. I, please tell me I wasn't muted this whole time. Okay. No, no, that was good. That was really good. Sorry, I'm also <laughs> splitting my focus a little bit here, but... Please do it uh, over. <laughs> Uh, no, that was very good. Um, I'm also, I finally got you guys, I, I had to, so I moved you guys all the wrong map and then had to do it again. <laughs> so uh, I still need a little bit more time from uh, Amrun or from Clark. What's a story they would have shared on the road of their childhood? Go ahead. Oh, no. <laughs> Hmm. I would have been behind Emeron. Yep, I'm moving people right now. So. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. I never really thought much about Emeron's childhood. He grew up with his parents, right? The parents who were performers? Mm-hmm. Yep. So Probably he spent most of his childhood with them. Um, what was that like? Were they traveling all the time? I don't remember. I wrote a bunch of it up, but that was a year and a half ago, and I don't remember what it was anymore. It's only canon once uh, it hits the table, so you can feel free to make it up now. I made up my story just now. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. I think this actually settled down <clears throat> for a bit while he was getting raised. Yeah, because Alzara was the babysitter. Mm-hmm. I think he was just a typical uh, gets into everything kind of kid. Yeah, I don't really have any ideas for, for anything else. Okay. What about his uh, initial discovery of, of uh, Nemozini and his, his flirting with that idea, even though it turned out not to be Nemozini in the end? I don't know. Okay. He just woke up from a, a uh, coma. And that's why he remembers that thing. <laughs> yeah, basically just saw them in his head. Okay. Um, we'll explore that again some other time then. Whoa, what year is this? <laughs> <laughs> How about Clark? What sort of stories would Clark have shared? Oh... He probably would have said something about uh, when he was, I'm going to say, probably eight, uh, as far as he can tell anyway, as far as age goes. He would have uh, been involved uh, with a society man, um, in fact, probably being caught in his basement, stealing a thing, some sort of bauble, <laughs> and uh, it was actually the very first time he had uh, killed a grown man. Um, the old fellow was frail, and uh, when he tried to chase him back up the stairs, he fell, and that was the end of him. Oh. And it's been downhill since then. <laughs> How does Clark appear when he's telling that story? Is he regretful about killing him or indifferent about Not him? Not at all. Not at all. Matter-of-factly. He seems a little disappointed that he didn't start killing people earlier in life. Okay. Well done. 
which and you know a story from someone who seems to be now carrying the sickle of death and <laughs> sponsored by a god should be a little more concerning perhaps to his companions it's suddenly concerning card seems fine there are some I mean, uh it has been shown that Clark doesn't generally open up a lot about his past to many people, so this might be a, a, a fiction, but he seems to believe it. Whoa. Okay. Well, as you all take a moment to think back along the many travels you've had across numerous islands at this point, you find yourself staring down an unlit hallway, narrow as all the rest of them have been at, in the front Amrun Elazar, firm, un unyielding. He's got his, you have your shield as well as your heavy armor, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, behind you, backlighting you somewhat, is the brilliant Fire Zara. Um, what does Fire Zara look like when she's trying to be smaller? Is it just a, a smaller being compressed down in, or do you change into ribbons of fire or dancing flames? What does it look like? A blanket of fire. I kind of think of, like, I kind of go completely flat against the wall. So, like, the wall itself is on fire? Yeah. Okay. Like the spell wall a sheet there, of... so maybe she just tries to any like that. <laughs> it's like more like a sheet of fire. Where I have a full square, I'd be more like, basically, a larger version of myself, kind of. Like, I just kind of condense like the inverse of a shadow yeah okay and directly behind her we have the shadow himself Whoa. clark wielding the shadow glaive a shadow of his former self <laughs> it's true and then in the back carrying his recently created magnifying glass is zakis <laughs> What does Akis's robes look like these days? Uh, it's the self-cleaning ones. Like a, I think you said they were green and they had like a gold or yellow or gold trim. Uh, those are the ancient ones you'd found on the island of... Taraka? I've forgotten. Taraka, I yeah. think, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the uh, trap. Yep. All right. Well, as you move forward and uh, as you it, pass into the... i glass because it seems obvious I'm not going to find anything else. And my... my, my my colleagues are walking in front of me and they're just ruining all the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so you're definitely finding footprints now, yeah. but it's probably your own. Uh, as you move through this doorway, one of the things that hits you right away, um, just passing through the threshold, is how much warmer it feels. And you start to realize that maybe that was one of the reasons the door does close automatically, is to avoid all this heat rushing into the other space. The warmth is continuous. There's a, a slight smell, almost a, a bitter kind of like a like a, a smell of of, of uh, smoke, but a little sulfurous perhaps. Uh, and it seems permeating the air. It's not a a single breeze or from an eminence just everywhere around you. Is that a smell we recognize? Not just coming from out there. Uh, no. Although she is clean, keeping the, the walls clean as she clings to them, trying not to burn you guys. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, of condensation also on the the bricks of the walls and a little bit on the floor as well, but there's a kind of mix of condensation and dust that you're moving through. The condensation, I'll touch the walls and does whatever moist substance coating the walls, does it hurt? I, is it some of that water? I, it doesn't seem to. It's it's a little sticky and filled with dust. Um, it appears to be water. Okay. And do we recognize the smell at all? Um. Make uh, let's see. That's the one thing I forgot to put in front of me was a character sheet. I have no idea what you guys can do. <laughs> we can smell. I'm pretty sure. Make an appropriate roll. Okay. <laughs> I'm assuming it would be like a perception. Sure. Oh, wrong window. I'll bring up a, I'll bring up a character sheet so I can I can follow along at home. I don't know why I didn't do that before. It smells like 
burning things? Oh, I'll Zara let one rip then. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if farting fire is a thing. <laughs> uh, it seems a little bit weird. You do notice that her form does occasionally puff little bits of flame, but they don't seem to be particularly coming from any part of the, the flaming anatomy. What's that smell? I have no clue. It's a little bit of a, listen, do you smell that situation? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Amrun, you're pushing forward then? Yep. Okay. You quickly come to a T-junction in front of you. Oh, no. Do we move our characters, or are you moving our characters for us? Yeah, I don't see uh, Let me just make sure that uh, you can still move them. It's under your... Con uh, turn by character settings. It should be under your control. Uh, there we go. See me down the corner now. And there is no light. Well, that's really weird. It's updated on one screen, but not the actual GM screen. Oh, well, that's because that one is frozen again. All right, well, I'll just watch you along on the other screen then. It appears to be a T-junction going north and south. Well, since south is closer, I'll move down to it. That's two. Okay. Just you following along? Yep. Do we hear anything coming from either junction or from either path? Uh, make a perception check. Got it right. I'm actually on the correct window this time. Wait, no, never mind. Oh, that's weird. Maybe roll 20 is overloading because I just got an error message saying your connection to the server has been dis been interrupted. Well, I rolled a three. <laughs> I had that last uh, week. I got a, yeah, I got a 28. Okay. I can't hear shit. Um, well, only only uh, uh, Zacchaeus is really looking, but um, the air is consistently thick and clouded. There's nothing in particular. There's the faint sound of um, perhaps water moving, something heavier than water moving. It seems to rumble very, very quietly in the back of, the, of your perceptions. Direction and back. Back of your perceptions. Okay. It seems to be coming from all directions, essentially. Is anybody else uh, here? <clears throat> uh, I guess so. Something all around us. Move up to here, and we'll walk right out into the hallway. <clears throat> okay. Still waiting for this other thing to load. Um, to your south, or to your right, actually, you see broad, wide stairs. At the top, it looks like a collapsed tunnel. Um, the stairs go upward from there into this collapsed tunnel. Um, large, heavy stones have been brought down upon it. Um, it looks like it had a nice portal at one point uh, around it, but those two large stones have been, have been pulled down and piled. On the other side, though, you see what might be the source of some of the sound, a, a water that runs over the... A walkway, which is now widened up out to uh, 10 feet wide. Ahead of the walkway, you see a strange red orangish glow. And orange glow, that's not Elzara, I'm assuming. That's correct. <laughs> because she's not down the hallway. She's in front of you. Uh, well, that's it for movement and dash. So that's it for me. Well, you're all kind of moving collectively as a group until something happens, so... Yeah. Well, we're not in, a, in an initiative right now. Well, if the stairs are blocked, then I guess they go up. <laughs> okay. Well, is it completely blocked? So, it's it looks as though... It looks as though it's it's quite heavily blocked. You can take a closer look if you'd like. Yeah, I'll take a closer look real quick. Okay. I'll go up... Make uh, a, a, if you can move me, Mark, I'm... My hand is being demanded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are you going? Uh, I'm going to go up uh, where Emran is as well. Okay. Well, I tried we'll... to reach for the remote and it was like... <laughs> <laughs> no. For those unclear, there's, uh, I think, a cat demanding yeah. the time. 
What's that yellow red that we see ahead? Fire or lava or something? Uh, just a glow of light at this point. As you move there, though, you see uh, the ro running water across the uh, across the floor. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's broken through a dam. Uh, it very clearly makes the sound one of the sounds you heard before, the sound of running water. Uh, it does look clear and un uh, un uh, molested, unlike the water you saw before. Uh, the glow is coming from around the corner. Uh, you take a closer look at the stairs, Zakis. Yep. And did you make a uh, investigation roll? I'm about to. Oh, wow. Okay. Whoa. As you look around, um, you do note the beautiful pieces of uh, gem inlaid stone that once sat atop this portal. Uh, this was probably a, a very important entrance at one point, a very uh, fancy entrance. But as you look over the stones and note the uh, residue and small amounts of powder, the crumbling of some of the stones, you get the impression that this tunnel was not just uh, collapsed from natural causes, but was in fact brought down. Brought down probably by massive explosions or lots of magic. Uh, Mark, uh, I ask because I can actually see into the next area. Uh, okay. So I can see, like, it looks like maybe the start of a bridge, and there's yellow and red. I'm wondering, is the yellow and red lava uh, flowing, or is it fire? Or... I hadn't moved the point of view up that far, so I couldn't tell what you'd seen. Uh, I will try something. There's a, a command that I supposedly can be able to utter within... Uh, within... Uh, 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 roll 20 to see from your perspective, and it's not working. Okay, that's fine. Uh, does it look like it was brought down like after somebody had escaped and gotten to the bottom of the stairs? There's no real indication of, of where anybody was when this happened, but it looks like it was a very thorough and deliberate job. Okay. It looks like from the residue you're seeing, this was this happened uh, uh, very extensively, so it wasn't an accident, it wasn't uh, a... A, uh, a an act of nature. It was very deliberate and meant to block this entrance off entirely. Okay. And you and you gather, kind of looking deep in and uh, kind of gazing, that this this rock is very thoroughly plugged. And holding a hand up, you're not even getting any sense of airflow. Has it taken less than ten minutes for us to get here since the uh, last yes. room? Yes. Okay. Do I sense disease from the water? Uh, you do not. Okay. So to get back to your question, because I wanted to finish off that part before I got too far ahead of myself. Uh, you do see around the corner, there does appear to be some sort of a stone bridge, uh, which looks to be crumbling somewhat. Uh, it is crude, but at the same time, well made. Uh, it's not adorned. There doesn't seem anything fancy about it. As you get there, you can distinctly feel the heat resonating off of what looks like molten lava flowing in, uh, in a, from this map's perspective, southerly direction uh, in parallel in some ways to the water itself that's there. Uh, and uh, it is glowing brightly. Ooh. The heat intensifies as you kind of come around that corner or come to that corner. Oh, if I'm not detecting disease from the water, I'll say this water seems to be fine. And I'll move up like that. Okay. As you step into the water, you actually feel a sense of relief and almost of uh, of uh, um, familiarity as the water runs over your feet, familiar and cold and fresh, and uh, every bit as as uh, comforting as your goddess's own presence. As you move towards the there, you can now distinctly see the bridge over a river of lava. On the far side, there seem to be a scattering of tools, uh, maybe an anvil from where you can see. Some other uh, uh, tools scattered about, a rack containing what look like to be armaments, but it's a bit far away to make out too many details. Uh, directly across from you where you are to the east, uh, just beyond the anvil, you see another round fountain. This one, again, unadorned uh, and uh, full of water. Um, make a religion check. Mm. 
It seems to have a carved symbol on top of it, but from this distance, you can't really make it out. Well, I mean, if we're just kind of wandering around, he'll just move into there so he can see more. And uh, okay. I don't know we kind of got a smithy, maybe, and it's really hot in here. So as you move there and step onto those stones, the stones underneath your feet are very hot. You feel like you couldn't stand there for stand still for very long. Uh, the lava and itself is still flowing, and now you kind of get the sense, uh, especially when you when, once you've stepped onto there, of a thicker steam forming. As just to the south, you can see the water itself brushes up against the lava, and where it does, it's constantly hissing and shifting, and uh, and uh, steam is rising like a vent along this entire line, uh, which for some of you, you might be able to see along that area there. Uh, Elzera, you step around the corner and the heat embraces you. Uh, it is a part of your being as well as uh, a familiar uh, sensation. But even for you, this heat is intense. Um, you have a feeling that while you, uh, you are a being of fire, uh, even this might be too much for you to experience directly. Across the way, you do see what looks like to be uh, a smithy. You can also make a religion check, Elzera. Okay. As you look across, perhaps it is because your eyes are unfettered by the heat of the lava itself, or perhaps just better education when you were growing up, but you actually recognize the symbols that are carved into the back of the fountain on the far side. There are two. Uh, one which is easier to pick out, these, the calm, straight lines of Tandu, which looks like a, a squarish arch. You'd seen these before. The biggest arch you'd ever encounter, in fact, being, strangely enough, in, uh, I believe, Bone Twitch's own realm, where it seemed as though a, an ancient temple of Tandu had been absorbed within it. T-A-N-D-U. But that's the god that the dwarves honor, right? Yes, yes Tandu the Great Builder, the god the dwarves are known to revere. Uh, given credit for architecture, given credit for uh, mechanics, given credit for uh, long-standing architecture and, and uh, bridges as well, are another symbol of Tandu. Within this symbol of Tandu, though, is a familiar uh, image that Again, you're surprised in some ways that uh, Amrun didn't recognize it, but you also can notice that because of the heat, his and all of your eyes are running a little bit, and it's a little hard to make out details at a distance. But within the symbol, within the embrace of the, if you will, um, uh, the symbol pi is actually very similar to the symbol of Tandu, but Tandu does not have a wave-like structure across the top, but a straight bar. But within the sort of uh, uh, pie shape, within the two uprights, uh, you actually make out uh, the very faint but uh, well-carved symbol of Paluxia, the triple wave that you've seen before. Different from most of the structures you've seen it, but, uh, but, but familiar nonetheless. Okay. So the heat is tremendous. Um, you can see on the other side partially made tools and the anvil as well as a workbench on which something seems to be still under under work. Um, um, yeah. So I feel that even with immunity to fire damage, I would be putting myself in danger going too close to this. It reaches an intensity far more than what you expect. So yes, the the lava itself might still present danger to you. Okay. I I tell that to Zakas because that's very concerning. Okay. I also mentioned to my well to everybody else that that hallway back there, the staircase that was brought down deliberately, and there's probably something. Nobody wants us going up there, basically. Which means we should probably get up there at some point. But anyway. Uh, oh, it's freaking hot in here. Zakus? Yeah? Make your religion check. Okay. 
I keep looking for my dice and they're not here. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Oh, whoa. When I hear so wow, the intensity, really good or really bad. <laughs> <laughs> the intensity of the heat and the fact that uh, Elzer just told you that that she actually fears this heat gives you a weird thought. Um, seeing over on the other side also this symbol of Tandu. Um, there are legendary stories of the blood of Tandu the very essence of creation itself the stories indicate that that is a a holy river if you ever found the blood of tandu known to be able to sculpt the hardest of anything uh, theoretically in the stories they talked about being able to shape diamonds with the heat in the blood of tandu given that this is a river and that's an element of tandu this might be a living manifestation of some of those stories although you do know that stories get distorted over time and stretch. But that presents to you the idea that this is not merely lava, but actually a holy site. I'll let everybody else know about that. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, quick question, though, to the DM, uh, just in general question. Like, whenever you give me information about stuff, Am I supposed to like to preserve like the role playing experience to relay it back in my own terms, or does that does that get too repetitive, or do I just say like I'll give this information to my friends? Like, which one's better? I'm, I mean, obviously, everybody's heard what I've said, or generally they have. Um, however, if you want to frame it in your own flavor, that's certainly appreciated. Like, you can add your own commentary to how you think it might be. Uh, or to how he would present the material. If he doesn't modify it at all, that's fine. But I know Zach is, is a hoarder of information yeah. and likes to be the smartest guy in the room. So you can certainly play that up as much as you like. Okay. So we presume that he did relay all that information yeah. in a way which suggests that not only did he read it in a book, he read all of the books that mentioned this and starts to relay probably, you know, several different poetic passages and... Uh, uh, you know, a couple of exaggerations. Um, certainly you can feel free to embellish that information. I give you free reign to kind of do that. And if I feel you've gone outside of the bounds of what I've, what I've suggested, I'll certainly let you know. But I want you to be creative and, and feel free to be so. All right. Well, I will use a lot of big words with too many syllables to describe that this is a holy site and possibly the blood of Tendu. And it's also fucking hot. <laughs> Yeah, from where you're standing, uh, you can feel the heat's intensity. I wonder what's on the other side. Uh, so is that where, Amran asks, is that where everyone wants to go? We have no idea where these guys are. Let's come back to this. Yes, worst case scenario, I can... Project an arcane eye and explore ahead of us. Crossing the lava without us having to actually cross the lava. I mean, that would be a good idea. Okay, well, if that's the case, then I'm going to walk up here. Yeah, okay. let's explore the path first. So you turn your back on the holy site and walk up the hallway. Continuing on, you see the water has has kind of curved over the the floor again and kind of comes to an end it feels almost as though the water has sort of seeped through and even though this is magnificent dwarven architecture you get a sense of two things uh one of the 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 immense amount of time is clark slowly sneaking across the walkway if so i'll get back to you in a minute um before you get too far uh as i as i lay out some of this description so the the water is seeping up and out of the the sides of the walls and even with the sense of incredibly skilled dwarven uh, architecture and care that was taken into carving every single stone and laying this out time and the power of water which translates to the power of paluxia has made its impact here diverting the river pushing it through taking and conquering over this ancient dwarven space thinking that all of you kind of come to a momentary realization that a lot of time has passed. If the dwarves had been here recently, this would not have been an issue. They would have stopped this or 
perhaps directed it or controlled it. But that gives you a sense of how much time has passed since anyone seems to have lived here on a regular basis. Thank you. Walk up to that hallway. Oops, sorry. I just kind of see that the water does cross again. And in front of you, you see another segment of water. With your vision, however, uh, Amrun, you do detect that that water seems to be somewhat uh, unclean. Now, Clark. Yeah, hi. Are you attempting to cross the bridge? I am, if that's all right. Okay. Okay. As you step onto the bridge, you note the stones on the far side, the, the western side, to be warm, even through your, well, now somewhat one-pitted boots. Uh, uh, although, actually, they've just been pitted as normal from all the fighting and being on fire. As you take a couple of steps inward, however, the intensity of the heat below you increases dramatically. Uh, you find your the bottoms of your feet start to get burned. Uh, i got to roll something here. You take oh, four points of of heat damage, essentially, the bottom of your feet. And you can feel the heat radiating uh, up from below. Uh, make a perception check. Sure. It may be a trick of the strange light in here, but you also get the sense that the lava below has, has uh, smaller or small peaks in it, almost as though it's spitting up from below, agitated a little bit. Hmm. Do you, do you continue to go further? Yes, uh, but before that, I'm going to use a bonus action and zero charges to fly. Okay. Ooh. I'm going to get to the other side if I can. As you extend the glaive and ask for its occupants within to grant you power indirectly from the power of Marius itself, the greatest trickster that ever lived, perhaps. Spectral, shadowy wings form across your, your shoulders, and you lift up effortlessly. The ceiling in this cave is uh, maybe 30 feet high, and you float over. The heat still quite strong below you, but you take no damage from not stepping on the stones. Right. Uh, As you land over there, yep. As you land over there, you notice that is a grinding wheel. Uh, a sword still upon it, ready to be sharpened. You can see a rack where half-finished weapons are also placed. Look like large war picks or hammers. A couple of shields. Uh, Clark would like to spend a little bit of time investigating before running back to, to the group. Okay. Do I know uh, that fire has gone off? With your passive perception, yes. You notice that uh, he's not right behind you. And then kind of shifting your perception in your strange form, you do not see him. And Zacchaeus is like... I will cross the water again. And across the bridge. Okay. You can see Clark on the other side, his, his uh, sp uh, uh, shadowy wings still extended. Seems to be examining the various tools and things that are there. Uh, make an investigation roll, Clark. Sure. I'm terrible at it. can do this. I'm projecting my scholarly influence to you across from this pit of lava. <laughs> You're seeing a lot of half-finished weapons. Um, the sword there still needs to be sharpened. Even not sharpened, though, you can see that the, the sword's edge itself is very strong. The metal looks unusual. It has a strange bluish tinge to it that you haven't seen very often. Uh, most of the weapons there have a similar tinge, but again, are half finished. Some of them have hilts that are missing. Others have uh, the, only the very basics of bindings for the blades to be put on. They all show a mark of skill and were started, but never finished. There are many empty spaces as well, and you get the sense that the, anything that was usable was taken as fast as it could be uh, grabbed. But these half weapons... Knowing as much as about weapons as you do, even in this state, they would be considered valuable, but not necessarily usable. Right. Uh, Clark would like to do two things before leaving, if possible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number one, he's going to take that sword. All right. Number two, he's going to try to, if the glaive is still around, he's going to try to sharpen it on that wheel. 
Nice. Okay. Um, you pick up the sword, add a half-finished Yuktal sword to your list. That's Y-U-K-T-A-L. Um, the, when you lift it up, it's got a really peculiar weight. Uh, it might just be that it needs to be ground down a lot more to be uh, to be used, or maybe it's the metal itself. It's hard to say, but it has an unusual weight to it. Okay. Uh, it its blade is triangular, um, wider towards the hilt, and coming to a fairly narrow point at the end. One of the things that strikes you right away is this isn't a dwarven sword. Right. Dwarves don't build swords like this. But this is clearly a dwarven forge. Okay. Um, then you take the glaive and try to lay it down on, onto the uh, grinding stone. Mm -hmm. You've used grinding stones before. This one is very well made. The stone of it seems to be uh, uh, worn down from use, not worn down from neglect. Uh, it's perfectly balanced and spins well and easily. But you lay the glaive's blade down across it, and the blade does not seem to even contact this. It's almost as though the blade is not made of an earthly substance. Damn it. All right. Well, uh, in that case, Clark will fly, if he can, back to where he came from. Okay. What has uh, Fire Zara and Zakas been up to in the meantime? You've seen him kind of poking around over there. Yeah, I'm just um, looking at Clark and seeing what he's doing. For me, okay. I see the there is, you know, this opening. I'm just making sure that nothing comes out there. Because okay. I don't want Clark to be stuck alone with something, basically. Okay. He poked around within the weapons and uh, played around with the the uh, the honing stone for a moment or two, but nothing seems to make any particular motion. Um, weirdly, you find yourself almost drawn to the lava, especially at this proximity, and you find your form kind of shifting and weaving, almost as though you were um, flowing in the same ebb and flow as the, as the lava itself, uh, almost as though the elemental connection between you is that strong. On the far side, you also note that some of the rocks that are right along the edge of the lava have a reddish glow, uh, almost as though they're hot. Yes. Interesting. Uh, Zachis is wondering, too, uh... Previous water sources were all gross and diseased, but this one seems okay. Could the lava, especially if there's like some godly property to it, could the lava be keeping the infection at bay? It's a conjecture. Yeah. Without test, it's hard to say. You do see right, right uh, down uh, by the edge where the water seems to flow out of the wall once more into the cave, mm -hmm. where, edge, where edge does collide with the lava. But you wouldn't call it... Uh, an easy marriage of two substances where it's there. It's a violent bubbling as the water itself is uh, is instantly turned into steam when it comes in contact with it. But you can also make out the, the very slightest ridge of cooled stone. In a way, um, this is a battle between uh, two essences. The water itself trying to put out the lava and the lava itself trying to consume the water. And an uneasy piece seems to be drawn along those lines. In, a, in any stories I might have read about at the library, did uh, Tendu and Paluxia typically get along? Or wait, no. Almost all records of Paluxia were wiped out, so I guess I wouldn't. Right. You didn't remember any records of, of uh, Paluxia. Uh, Tendu, as a figure, um, usually shows up as a stoic figure, mm -hmm. uh, is completely and utterly humorless for the most part, uh, and doesn't seem to. to uh, most of the conflicts are because people didn't follow what he said. Okay. But he said he pretended to say very little. Um, his impact on the dwarven society tended to be in in laws that later on were reinterpreted, and you get the impression that the deviation from what Tendu had said originally and what now is presented might be dramatic. Um, but if Tendu and Paluxia ever met, those records are all gone. Maybe somebody of, of the actual uh, Tendu religion might know, because the records you have are primarily from what's kept at the library. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I had to mute, I had to mute, to mute my microphone because somebody was in the room. Okay. That's fair. But I... Um, so, okay. Um, Clark 
one uh, flies back, floats back across the uh, bridge once more. Cancel the shadowy wings. wings. Sorry. Cancel the wings. Hmm? Okay, you dismiss the wings as well. The shadows kind of fade and drift behind you. Uh, as you pass by uh, uh, Fire Zera, uh, you notice as well, uh, Fire Zera, that the uh, the shadowy wings are not diminished at all by the bright light of either yourself or the lava. They seem to once again defy light and be pure shadow. Interesting. Meanwhile, uh, Amrun, you've been up there patiently waiting for everyone to reconvene. You see yourself at you're muted. You're muted, sorry. <laughs> sorry and if, weirdly, uh, I hear you from the other room. If they're uh, wandering around down there, then he'll move up a little bit ahead and take a look at the next area. Oh, I don't have those there. Whoops, just a second. <laughs> Okay. Uh, as you reach that point, you can see the water now clearly has that same eerie glowing green color. You can see to the right of you that the, uh, the river, presumably that you've been following, has branched off. Um, it almost looks as though it was dragged off in that direction. It does not seem uh, as though it is a natural flow, but in fact seems to have been pushed through the, 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 the ground that's there flowing from the right to your left, so flowing off in this direction. There's also the faintish red glow from that direction, from the left. Um, as you stand there, make a perception check. Hey. Okay. Oh, come on now. Sorry, the map is once again frozen for me. Processing. Processing. Mm -hmm. Please. Running. So the, the water is flowing from the south up to the north and then west? No. No, it's flowing north to south. Okay. And the north, the branch you see in front of you is, is flowing uh, east to west. Okay. So it... Likely the source is somewhere further up northeast or something. Uh, correct. And actually, you can see from that point that it seems to uh, flow into a cave in the rock that's, uh, that is pretty much pouring out of. There's no, there's, so up in this direction, it's just a cave in the rock. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to get my map correct. All right. Uh, as motion drags your attention oh. off to your left, the faint reddish glow drags your eye. But between a set of upstanding crystals, you see a shimmer. It's difficult to notice uh, at first, but the slight motion catches your eye. The shimmer turns into a tear in the fabric of space that stretches from the upper part down to the lower, so about 20 feet wide. Uh, and emerging from this tear, you see three, uh, four creatures actually, flowing in. There looks to be a darker black version of the Sladi. Off to one side, I have to put them in the space, so they're all kind of appearing there, but... Uh, a reddish version and a gray-black version with dark thorns emerging behind them is a figure uh, the likes of which you've seen before with a head covered in tentacles floating somewhat off the ground, the gray form of an illithid. I don't think Amran has actually seen them. No, no, wait, in the river we were. Yeah, in uh, Emerald's yep. Upstown Tower. Yep. Yeah. No, the previous times that we had encountered the Lithids, uh, either they went invisible and disappeared, or Emrin wasn't there. Oh, right, that was Kazama. 
But when we were crossing the river, I believe, uh, yeah, it was there. Yeah. Just a quick thing. Um, while we were traveling, my shield would have fallen, so I would have asked someone to carry it. Who would you ask to carry it? I mean, I would ask Zach because he's the only one who can understand me. Okay. Okay. How heavy is it? So some. It, it's like five pounds. Oh, that's fine. At most, I don't. I don't know okay. off the top of my head. It's a little awkward to drag drag around, but you know it's important. Yeah. And she would never forgive you if you left it behind. No. However, as you're standing there, uh, I'm really... If she is the thing between scary nasties and myself, then yes, yeah, I will definitely do whatever I can to help her. <laughs> as you're standing there, Amrun, and you take in the sight of these things coming through a breach in reality, the f one in the middle, the one with the uh, blackened skin, turns its head and fixates its eyes on you. Let's roll initiative. I go, incoming! <clears throat> Something? Oh, shit. Um. So. Remember to select your token before you do the initiative roll. The what? Make sure that you're, that you're selecting your token. So, little issue for mine is that mine is going to be inaccurate. I need to add one to whatever I roll. Okay, I can change them. Yeah. So not 20, so 23. Okay. It's going to take me a moment because I realized these are not the tokens I prepared. So <laughs> no, I naturally, I've got automatically. Them. At least they're, they're, they're working. I will give them that. So that's something there. I just clicked the initiative button on the character sheet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Jody, it looks like uh, you didn't have Clark selected maybe uh, when you get it. Okay. Uh, I'll do it again then. Mark can actually put the initiative in manually if he right clicks the token. Yeah. Oh, that's not right. Shoot. Hmm. Yeah, Clark's not showing up on the initiative anyways. I, I can manually put it in a second here. Yeah. Just need a moment or two. It's going to be interesting because I'm all out of disintegrate. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm going to blow my nose. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to need a moment to do this. So if there are things you need to take care of away from the microphones, this might be the appropriate time to do so. I'm just uh, straightening fake hair. I need to uh, yeah, type in the right window. Holy crap. Why am I doing this to myself? I can use stealing the show. <laughs> uh huh. You're being invaded by cat. Yeah. Your screen doesn't go black like mine did one time. <laughs> well, I remember when we first did this, just before we connected you last week, I seem to recall your cat swearing up a blue streak by uh, by walking across your keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I do remember that. See, she's really good at avoiding the keyboard. All right. Almost. Oh, wait. I set two of them to be the same. Oh, sorry, folks, for those of you watching along at home and seeing us stumble, but that's okay. We will have these things... Ironed out and perfect at some point. I don't know what point that's going to be, but I have dreams. You can't go behind the TV. Right. All right. Thank you. 
did it add it no Okay, almost there. Conveniently. Ah, oh, no. Help buttons are not conveniently help buttons when they keep moving things on me. <laughs> help buttons? You mean that thing you always click accidentally and then can't figure out how to make it go away? The the only time I hit a help button is when I don't need to hit a help button. Exactly. <laughs> and I rarely need to hit a help button, but I, I uh, yeah. Okay. Almost there. Wow, those are really terrible rolls. That's okay. Okay. Hey, it would just be the same as us today, man. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Oh, and they didn't add in, they didn't act the actual numbers at all. <laughs> <laughs> it just All right. I am not mad at it. I am just concerned. Okay, so um I have two for Amrun cuz it didn't get it didn't give me a chance to clear off the last one, so it looks like uh I don't see an Amrun one here. Oh wait. Uh, eight. Okay, so it's the it's the other one. You're still muted, Pat. I can hear him from the other room. Uh, so Fire Zero needs a needs a plus one to that. So twenty three. Yeah. Uh, and Clark's initiative is twelve, but it didn't add it, so I will add one. Or you can take the twenty one I rolled originally. It's up to you. Oh, did you add it? Okay, I have no problem with that. Three either. So twenty one. All right. That's a nicer number anyway, isn't it? Really? Yeah, what is that? I agree. Sort numerically descending. Okay, there we go. Oh, it, it got rid of all of my numbers again. This is... Um, let's see. Okay. That one. Got that. Okay. Sort numerically descending. Okay, okay finally. <sighs> Is everybody ready to go? Yup. Have you left? Have you all left yet? Nope. <laughs> um, given that it is twenty after seven, which somehow is surprised me, um, I have a feeling that we will not be finishing this combat this evening. Just to let you know. Fair nope. enough. But I will say, however. Uh, one nice thing about roll twenty is everything is just going to be left as it was. So nice. I, I don't have to clear the table off. I don't have to worry about getting the dice out again. I got it all in, all in, in, in front of me here. So uh, you hear uh, El Zera uh, or Fire Zera, the call from Amrun far ahead. We've got incoming, which begins everything, which makes it not a surprise. However, you have no idea what. Probably up in front him in front of him somewhere. <laughs> well, I'm going to get here before five feet of movement. Okay, so flames fly around Clark and Zakis and Amrun. Carefully go around Amrun. Uh, and uh, uh, you do find some water upon the floor here, though. Okay. Um, I'm going to like. Hmm. And before you, you see three of those creatures, each of a different shade, and yep. then beyond them, one of those uh, strange squid-headed illithid you saw before, oh. you'd seen before. Grammar good. So I'm going to take a damage, go across this water here, and I'm going to like smush myself against this wall, so I'd be like wide okay. against this wall. So I'd probably be taking up like. You have the, the squares, like, in quarters. I'd be taking up, like, the top, like, six 
squares, like small squares. You mean you mean smaller than you are? I don't think I can make you any. Oh, oh yeah, I, I'm just telling you that's what I'm doing. So that you know. okay, kind of smooshing up there. All right, smoosh. Uh, and I'm going to slam this one. All right then. Yeah. They seem somewhat surprised by someone being right there, but that's their problem, not yours. Nineteen. A nineteen is a clear hit as fire rains down upon them. For eleven. Eleven points. Fire. The fire, however, does not burn as deeply as you had suspected it should. Cool. Eighteen. For another eleven. Uh, Eighteen does hit again, and uh, again the fire skids across their scaly surfaces. Some burning behind, but not nearly as much as you expected. Wait, do you have me so that I actually emit light? Yes. Yes. Lovely. I just noticed that. Sorry. I'm figuring it out. One thing at a time. <laughs> uh, I am going to also uh, move things around on my screen. I'm going to go and roll 2d8 on heal 13. Okay. So the flame kind of brightens a little bit as you as you find yourself restored. That is the end of your turn? Yep, I'm going to mute just so that y'all don't hear my roommate's conversation on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> or are you talking to your I'm cat? I'm sure that... Well, that's probably the real thing. The cat <laughs> talking back, really. Uh, <laughs> Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I will attempt to race ahead and engage, but before he does, he's going to uh, get his glaive charged up with a plus three, plus three. Okay. Hey, yo. As the shadows thicken around and start to whirl around in this tornado like fashion, whirling up and down the blade, uh, little, little. Uh, Fangs and teeth start to emerge in shadowy form around the, the blade itself, uh, almost as though a creature is being called into existence, but only for an instant, wrapping around this blade. It makes a, a small wailing sound as it goes around. It's like, which is a little bit unnerving. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um. So you squeeze on by Amrun, yeah. make your way into the room. That's as far as I can go, and I think I've done my actions. So that'll be it for me. Uh, you could step there if you wanted to attack, stepping beside Fizera. But that would put you in, in range for everything. I do have reach, if that's useful. Oh, that's true, too, yeah. Uh, poke this guy? Uh, yep. It's going to be at disadvantage if you're worried about hitting Fire Zera, because she's literally... Well, actually, no. She pressed herself against the wall. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, my problem is I think I use both actions to get where I am and a bonus to do the charge thing. So Right, right. Anyway. So you're ready in there and, and uh, certainly attracting a tremendous amount of attention, uh, okay. if not least of which from Fire Zera, who's standing in front of you and seeing this or hearing this, this strange evocation. Uh, that's Clark. All right. They actually get a turn before everything goes to hell. Excellent. Uh, hmm. If you press the arrow on the bottom of the turn order, the top one will be the current turn. Yeah, let's try it. And last time I did a just randomized things. Okay, all right. It it sort of randomized things. Also, it set Clark to twenty eight. Mm -hmm. Weird. Yeah. Which is not right. <laughs> if I press it again now, the illithet is thirty four. So yeah, yep, there's no. That's, that's definitely not right. Okay, what was Clark? It was twenty one. Twenty one. Well, here's the thing. I'm I was the last to go, and I'm at the bottom of the list, so it sort of worked. 
If you well, it's put, yeah, it's put it in the right yeah, but, order, but it's giving the wrong numbers. Yeah, what, I'm not going to have the numbers. I don't want the numbers to go like that because there's there's things. Yeah. Um, Clark was 21 and the Elizabeth was 17. Okay. So I will set sort that again. Yeah, I don't know. These tools are weird. Uh, however, it will get a chance to move. Uh, all right. Hmm. Okay. The ceilings in this uh, this small cave are about 40 feet up. It's kind of this weird oblong cave. Uh, the creature in the back with these strange tentacle shapes um, kind of gestures with the tentacles in El Zara's direction or Fire Zara's direction. Uh, make a constitution saving throw as you feel your essence being drawn upward. Give me just a second here. I need to get the con of plus three. Okay. Um, same constitution. Ooh, okay. Uh, as you feel your fiery essence being moved in a strange sort of way, as your body, what what there is of it, flies 20 feet up into the air and hovers there. Oh. Interesting. Uh, that's I'm its turn. Of this. <laughs> uh, you're not. I'm going to put a little token marker on your thing to indicate that you are floating. Let's see what I got here. How about... Yeah, you've got angel wings. I don't know why angel wings, but you do. And they are you are moved bodily upward. Uh, Zacchaeus, you do not see any of this, but you see Clark charge in, his weapon fully charged, him ready to go. Something's happening, isn't it? I bet so, you something's happening. Something's probably happening. Yeah. I, I don't like it when things are happening. One, or five, ten... Fifteen. Oh shit! So um, I will cast a firebolt at the illithid. Okay. Don't forget to take a point for the water too. Right. Oh yeah, you stepped into that water, right. so you feel that uh, that oh. corruption creeping up your leg. Does a fourteen hit it? Uh, where are you? Uh, you can uh, open your character sheet for the firebolt. All right. So you send the firebolt flying over towards it, and it, it uh, seems to have underneath its its cape some sort of metal surface, and it bounces off. Its head sort of tilts slightly sideways as it sort of keeps its tentacles oriented weirdly towards your floating friend. You've never seen uh, Fire Zera take to the sky, and it seems to be fighting that, but it looks it with its eyes straight over at you. Then I will uh, just... Is the rest of my movement to go back away? <laughs> uh, would a 15 have hit? Because that's what he actually has. Uh, you have a plus 12 to hit. Oh, I thought it was plus 11. Okay. Nope. Some of your sheet, some of your character sheet numbers are wrong. That's not surprising. Uh, actually, a 15 would hit. Woo! Right. So roll for damage. Ah, better numbers. Ooh, that's a huge mm. amount. Yeah, it's average for that. And I retreat back behind the wall because... Oh, do I notice so whether the of... Illithid was like an Alhoun or was it like a regular Illithid? Uh, it looked to be like all the typical uh, Illithid you've seen before. Okay. One second. All right. The one elephant in three slots. That appears to be the case. I'm just checking on something. Okay. Hmm. Not as good as I hoped. All right. Do, do. 
And Zach just curses to himself like, shit, 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 I should have just stayed at the library. So the, the little firebolt flies on through, hitting the armor, as opposed to where it was less impressive before, and now it seems to, the, the flame sort of flows over its shoulders. It doesn't say anything, which is kind of creepy, because it doesn't say anything at all. Uh, but it kind of jerks a little bit, but seems to maintain its concentration. Um, it is, oh, hello, this guy's turn. Where are you? There you are. Uh, as the one in the middle lurches forward, I think. Oh, he's got a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, look at that. Um, oh, what's the range on that? I, I don't get to use these things. This is fun. No. Uh, I think it's going to cast a spell. Just got to find where that silly spell is. Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, the one in the middle. Yeah, it'll catch all three. The one in the middle uh, kind of moves its hands and mutters something in a guttural voice. It's not language as you understand it, but it seems to draw power in towards it. And its eyes seem to encapsulate everything in your vision. I need uh, Firezera, Clarg, and Amrun to make... Oh, where'd the spell go? Do do do. Uh, wisdom saving throws. What's it doing? It is casting a spell. Okay. Is it something that requires me to be able to see it? Because I can't. Uh, On my screen, all I can see is the reddish guy up at the top. Uh, it can see the edge of you, though. And actually, doesn't need to be able to see you. Hmm. Interesting question. Do, do, do. Each creature in the cone of space hmm? doesn't actually have to see you. Okay. Uh, shoot, where'd my character sheet go? These are things I cannot answer. Hmm. For some reason, it must have got closed. Okay, just a second. Uh, there we go. So, Clark got a 21? Wow. Ooh. Nice. Uh, let's see. Emran also got a 21. Wow, very nice. Yay, we don't die today. <laughs> Elzara got a 23. Wow, okay. Yeah. yeah, as you feel the sensations, it seems to be emitting out towards you, flow over. Images flash before your eyes, but you steal yourself uh, and, and in the moment and reject the images, knowing that this is the true reality, and nothing could possibly be as bad as what you're facing right now, <laughs> and reject the illusion. Was it a fear thing? It was a fear thing. Because uh, that's something that actually uh, I'll have to know, because he gives everyone else a bonus if he succeeded. Sorry, what now? Uh, if he's not affected by charm, fear, or petrification, uh, his allies within 30 feet, uh, he can give them advantage as a reaction. So oh, it's okay. a fear sort of thing. We'll have to have Amron roll first, and then. Okay, I had no idea. Didn't matter in this particular case, but something to know for it. Okay. Uh, let's see. That was that one. Um, no, this guy up here. This guy up here is going to ignore the now out of uh, distance uh, fire Zara, which is somewhat above him, uh, and charge towards Clark and this screaming weapon. Uh, let's see. These guys are not so sophisticated. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, it just simply lurches towards you. There's not really that much fancy to, to it. With a uh, familiar bite and twin punch sort of attack, does a 20 hit? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, they're not that impressive. Wait, is that 
the one for the bite or for the... Yes, it is. Okay. As it bites into you, chomp, chomp, chomp. No. Uh, you take eight points of piercing damage as its nasty little teeth is clamp down on your arm. Thanks. Uh, then it proceeds to do as as the many of them have done, kind of using that leverage of the claw, then begin to uh, slash towards you. 17 to hit. That'll hit. With another 11 points of piercing damage this time. And I will need a constitution saving throw. Okay. Mm. 20. As you feel the terribly familiar form of something try to crawl along the claw, but you are you are able to kind of twitch in the right way, and it, it seems to drop harmlessly away. But then it strikes with its other hand. Sure. Ooh, that's a nat 20. Ow. Okay. So let's do... I'll just do double the dice that way. Wow, that's terrible. For another 11 points. Hey. Piercing damage again. And another constitution saving throw. Oof. Con saving throw. 22. Ew. No problem. It's almost as though you invite these things in just to dash their hopes. Here's hoping. Uh, let's see. Where is it going to stay where it is? Yeah, why not? I'm Rune. Uh, There's something, a, a, a blasting effect from just beyond where you can see. Well, uh, I'm right here because uh, he doesn't have to move to cover everybody. He's going to cast Mass Cure Wounds at level okay. six. How far does that extend? <laughs> Way more than the 10 feet away that you are. <laughs> okay, even around corners? Yes. Well, awesome. you're not around a corner from, from me. Okay, cool. Um, if you're up... So, you can't get to hit more people. What? I don't need it. Can you repeat that? I can't hear you. Oh. Uh, the, um, are you, is it one that you're upcasting to hit more people? Or is it more? Not, uh, not in D&D. &D. That's a, uh, a Pathfinder thing, I think. I couldn't. I can't. I heard oh, what you said, sorry. but I heard, uh, "Are you blah blah blah? Hit more than one yeah. target." Can do. No, you are. You are correct, Marie. Pardon me. There is a way to upcast that. So, are you casting at fifth level or higher? Uh, no, like I said, I'm casting it at sixth level, so it heals okay. 48 damage. Okay. Uh, and it will hit everybody within 30 feet of me, uh, Thanks. except the bad guys. All right. Uh, Roll them bones. So. Oh, actually, let me just check on something. Ah, uh, no, I can't see you anyway. And at, eh, that's crappy, but add three to that, so eighteen damage or eighteen healing on everybody. Who eighteen damage on everybody. He reveals his troop. No, never mind. Uh, I'll move my POV so everybody's in sight. All right. As the wave of healing energy extends from him in a globe of blue and white. Okay, and now I can't access my. Uh, I got a double, oh, I got a double click range? in order. To, Sorry, oh, what was the range? It's a, it's a thirty foot. Uh, Alzara's not in that. She's twenty feet up. Oh no! Uh, and ten feet away from me. That's thirty feet. Uh, you use the longest distance when measuring it for rapid. Uh, Doesn't uh, matter if it's a diagonal; it's even closer. The longest distance she could be away from me is 10 feet horizontally plus 20 feet vertically, and that's still 30 feet. Okay. That's not the way they do the calculation quickly because they don't want to do trigonometry, but I'll let it for now. It's, uh, that's how it is in the book. So, uh, And... Uh, that's actually, no, me. she's farther away from you. Anyway. She'd be farther away from you, but that's not the point. Um, uh, certainly more than 20, than 15 feet, but I'll let it for go for now. Uh, that's I'm, your I'm, turn. I'm at most 15 feet away from him. You are 20 feet up in the air. Oh, forgot about that. Sorry. Yeah. So I'll let it go for now. 
Uh, but just yeah. keep that in mind that she's not as close as you think she is. It's uh, twenty feet up is still tw larger than fifteen feet. I have a thirty foot radius. You have a thirty foot the diameter. Uh, no, actually, uh, sorry. Just a second. It is a thirty foot. Oh wait, now is this actually thirty foot radius? Okay, never mind. Thirty foot radius. Yeah. Okay. It's it's marked differently or weirdly on the spell, so it looked like it was thirty foot radius or thirty foot diameter. All right, never mind. It's fine. Uh, uh, I got nothing else I can do. Okay, so you're staying where you are. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna block the okay. hallway. Okay. Uh, let's see. What are you going to do then? As the last of them gets a chance. Hmm. Hmm. Nah, not that, not that. Okay. Seeing that that didn't work. Eh, it wants to see what's going on. So the third one will move out to the center of the hallway. As you now see one of them come right in front of you. This one seems somewhat larger than the other ones you've seen before and has large... Uh, 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 thorny extensions almost or almost uh, tusk like extensions on its arms on its legs uh, where are you Damn it, shields up there he is. that looks like things I don't want to get hit by uh, this one uh, hmm see you there oh actually now that it sees you guys there uh, it begins to cast a spell uh, and you see it kind of moving its hands and tapping its stomach periodically. And it gets this sort of weird bodily motion and kind of heaves in a bit of air and then opens its mouth wide as a large volume of icky green yellowish fog extends from its mouth. Uh, it reaches, well, actually for perspective, uh, it reaches down to where the river ends it's 120 feet long, okay. uh, but in this case, it's only going to cover Imran and and Zakis. Uh, as both of you see this this Icarus fog. Um, you said it was a spell. It is a spell. Well, it's going to get counterspelled is... at level three. Okay, roll. Just a straight up roll, or? Yep. Yep. So I'll roll plus your. Plus your uh, your spell spell uh, is it spell attack or is it? It's just int modifier. Okay, well that's still significant. Yeah. So just press your intelligence. Yep. Plus six, I think, at this point. Yeah. You can just make an intelligence roll off the sheet too. Damn it! That was a shitty roll. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. The spell goes off. Damn it. Uh, as the ichor flows down. Actually, this is going to last for a while. So I will draw it on the map. If I can get the right tool coming up. Uh... Can I just make a note real quick? Mm -hmm. uh, my screen is grayed out, and I'm the only token on my screen. Uh, grab your token for a second and just like shift it without really going anywhere. It should come back. Oh, here we go. Thank you. I guess the map was sleeping. Okay. Map wanted to take a break. Yeah, it, ha it happens, unfortunately. Okay, so we're going to draw this out because it lasts for a while. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. It's not as big as I thought it was. So that's good. That makes it easier. Let's see if I can do a appropriate size. Uh, there. So is this billowing? Oh, damn it. Ah, stop drawing things. Jeez. <laughs> It'd be funny if it, was, if it wasn't annoying. Still kind of funny. Okay, uh, except on my this, screen. Yeah, as a billowing uh, smoke... It's not crossing across the, the wall here, but it's kind of going around corners. Mm -hmm. uh, as each of you, so that'd be Zakis and Amrun, it is a poison effect, a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, 
Constitution save and throw. Awesome. I bet you I'll be rolling at this advantage for the foreseeable future. Mm. Okay, so both of you failed. Yep. So I get to roll damage. Okay. And you find yourself engulfed in a noxious cloud. Take 25 points of, of poison damage. Ouch. Yeah. And it persists. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot see through it. Uh, let me just check here. Uh, I believe, where are we here? Yeah, I guess it's not heavy, uh, Fox. You're disadvantaged seeing anything through it, essentially. Oh, it's heavily obscured. Yeah, you can't see anything through it. So you're effectively blinded at the moment. Challenge accepted. I have a question. Uh, yep. yep. Did uh, Black Gray come within 10 feet of me from outside of 10 feet of me during that movement? Uh, no. No, it started within 10 feet of you and still within 10 feet of you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, you already used your reaction, though, I think. Yeah, I got a polar master thingy for when. Oh, yeah. Range. Yeah, he's got. Uh, yeah, he can hit it when they come within range now, yeah, too. So he needed to be far okay. away. Cool. Cool. But he didn't start yeah. outside of the range. He was yeah. already within it. Yeah, the other is the only keeping. one that's out. Yeah. Uh, and that is its turn. Uh, back around to the top, Fire Zera. You find yourself floating up in the up in the air. Um, I'm going to re-become my normal size, uh, extending to the left. Okay. I need to put you on the right side here. I can't see you. Just move back. Here. There we go. So I'd be, oh, I... up. I'd be where your vision point is. There you go. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Now you're floating high up in the sky. But you're still floating. Yep. Um, but now I'm 10 feet tall. Yep. Uh, does does that floating. make it easier for me to reach a thing? Uh, you can't reach anything except potentially that far wall. That's going to be an athletics check to try to reach it. Like I, so even then I can't hit anything. Okay. Um, you can't reach any of them, no. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to move to here. Okay, you can't move uh, because you can't, unless you can come in contact with the air, you don't fly, right? Is, is this in, in any way overstrained or paralyzed? Nope, this is levitate. Levitate? Mm -hmm. You're literally floating in the air. Hmm. Well, I can do absolutely nothing then. Other than changing well, like said, back, you, yeah. Well, like I said, you can try to reach for the wall, but as you try to spin and move yourself in place, there's nothing to grab onto. Yeah, so I can do nothing. So I, do I think nothing. you should square up the weapon. Okay, so you're holding your turn, or I do nothing. Can you cast anything? I can't cast in this form until level eighteen. Okay. Uh, I'll hold an attack if I get dropped, but like, that's the best. Okay, it or is. or something comes within range, presumably. Mm -hmm. Or something comes within range, presumably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you see the uh, the fire elemental uh, held aloft and frustratingly trying to move and unfortunately unable to pull against anything. It seems to be uh, held there for the moment. Clark. Uh, I would like to stab somebody. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, well, there is the red in front of you or the gray-black to your side. I think we're going to go west and try to get the okay. reddish guy, I guess. Here goes nothing. 
Do either of those hit uh, with a plus those three are, on both? Those are, are both very effective. Uh, both of them. Hooray. Super effective. Okay. It looks quite upset with uh, your attacks. So if you just click on the word glaive, yes. it'll do damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, so 16 slashing. Okay, that's for the or first attack. Right uh, actually, no, nope, that's already worked oh, in. Neither. So there's 13 slashing and four necromancy. Well, it's it's plus well, three because it's plus three weapon at the moment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got a buff on yeah. So that's that's totally 20 damage. Woo! That's Woo! a nasty hit. Okay. That's the first. Uh, as as the uh, the screaming uh, 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 the screaming elements around it kind of chomp into and start to almost like a like you're holding on to some sort of drill grind into its form. Uh, and it uh, grimaces and kind of uh, uh, shouts, and you see its tongue kind of loll out of its mouth angrily. Uh, uh, and then an additional 13 on the second hit. Yeah. All right. It is yeah. Uh, as you whirl and swing the glaive around, it is cutting through it quite nastily. Oh, good. It doesn't drop, though. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh... Can I use the bonus action? We have a second attack, don't yeah. you? That was both. that was two attacks. Oh, that was, okay. You're doing that I'm, both. So. I'm counting it as both, yeah. But I have a, another thing I can do uh, okay. because of my brand new feat for Polearm Master. I'm going to try to butt this uh, frog person uh, with the blunt end of my weapon. Okay. Yeah. So we can imagine all these swinging and swirling around, then over the neck, and then back. Yes. Yeah, so here's the other thing. Now the damage will be different. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-seven is definitely a hit. Okay. <laughs> That's an eighteen to hit. Okay. Cool. Uh, so oh, cool. the damage is actually going to be different. It's going to be this. Uh, one moment. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's a thirty to hit. Holy crap. Mm. So that's another six, seven, eight, nine damage. Uh, why well, is the damage uh, D four plus strength plus that? I don't have the the uh, the butt it's attack a, in it's there. D four plus three, and then I've got a plus three damage buff on right now. Oh, okay, Not very nice. Yeah. So that is another ten damage as you butt it across the 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 forehead, and you can see its eyes kind of cross, looking at the thing that just hit it. And it, in, in, incredibly, it, 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 hap, it backs up a half step and kind of grabs onto its nose, looking rather worse for wear for this strange set of blows. Right. That was not intended to rhyme, but it did. All right. Well, that's 35 that's damage turn. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a lot. All right. Uh, that's, uh, Clark, you still have movement, technically. Where I'm at. Okay. Uh, let's see. What is that going to do? That is going to... doesn't have any of those things. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. We can try that. I don't know if we can... The, the, uh, the Illithid, uh, kind of, uh, floats over a little bit to, to, to kind of be below. Nah, it's not going to do that. It's, it's way too close. It's going to, uh, hmm. No, nope, it's going to, it's going to pull back and stay in the corner. It's happy with what it's doing right now. Uh, Zacchus. You are in this cloud. Yeah, this cloud is gross, and I hate it. Um, I will cast... make a Constitution saving throw. Okay. Mm-hmm. Once I can find it. Eighteen. Uh, Eighteen is a success. So you take half damage. You take 10 points of poison damage. It is my turn, right? It is your turn. Okay, I will I will uh, definitely and quickly be casting... What was it? Spell sheet. Where did you go? 
<laughs> cast spell sheet. I'm casting gust of wind to clear this cloud out of the area in which I am. Okay. Nicely done. Uh, let's see. Gust of wind. All right. It's a level two. Yep. Just got to check. Which direction you're going to blow that in? Back towards it. Okay. That's where Clark is, too. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you get a line where it's 60 feet long and 10 feet wide. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will position it. Um... Huh. Cause I, can I pos position it like 40 feet behind me so it clears both me and Amrun? Doesn't quite get the Clark, but ends up on just on the slide. Uh, the range is from you. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Well, eh. so it is a, essentially a ray coming from you. You could move first if you want to, but uh, would I take additional damage from the cloud? You don't know. You also can't see anything outside of the cloud. You can't even see Amrun, even though you're pretty sure he's only a few feet away from you. Well, I will. One, two, three. Wait, no, that's 60 feet, so I can't even move that far anyway. I'll just cast it in the direction of the slot and, you know, hope it extends past the people I don't want to hit. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Because if I just okay, the wind... like, say east, then it's still going to be affecting Amrun. Um, okay. Doom, 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 doom. Okay. Uh, you cast the spell. The wind begins. Technically, the effects don't happen until the start of turns, which is kind of weird. So it has to extend for at least one round. Okay. Okay. So it's clear the, uh, spaces, and is it clear around Clark too? Like, is there does the hallway continue? I don't see it. Uh, you, there's a wall on the far side, but you don't see that. Okay. Well, um, hopefully, it'll like draw a shape. And... It will disperse the thing immediately. It just doesn't cause people to make strength checks until their turn. It disperses the section of it. Yeah, but... that sixty foot. So that, foot wide section. so that that uh, that section right there where Amrun is, the wind blows away. So there's kind of a, a hole in that right now. We'll get to the rest of that on Amrun's turn and all the rest of their turns. Uh, let's see that one. Okay, so that's your that's your action. You can still move or bonus action. I've already got Mage Armor up from last round, or last uh, episode. I'll just move here-ish, so I'm out of the way of things. <laughs> okay. You're still in the radius there, by the way. Radius of what? The uh, the large circle. Oh. The the wind is not dispersed entirely, or the uh, the fog is not dispersed entirely. This just the... me. Pass it again. <laughs> All right. Is that where you want to go? You will, again, you're still in the cloud. Yeah, no, I, I'm, it's not where I want to go. But I'm, and I'm just like thinking right now. Okay. Yeah, I'll just go behind them, Rune. And hope for the best. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Where does that guy get to move to? Hmm, Okay. It is the gray one's turn. Well, it can eat crappy cloud. Uh, Technically, it doesn't shift the cloud. It just disperses it, but it'll make me and him make strength checks or we get pushed around. Okay. Well, Clark is strong, so I know he can do it. Um, Hopefully. Shoved around. <laughs> I appreciate your confidence. <laughs> Uh, where did it go? All right. Well, this guy has fewer options that he likes. Um, hmm. Okay. 
Uh, the gray one vanishes. Is that the one that's in front of us? No. Nope. That's the gray black one. Okay. I just got to figure out how to make saying. him vanish. There we go. Can you see him? You shouldn't be able to see him. There we go. He disappeared. The gray one vanishes. Uh, that makes it the red one's turn. Red one just got beaten up. Doesn't like being beaten up. Wants to eat. Sure. Tries to eat. We'll try to eat once more. Hey. <laughs> I get starved to death. Uh, it's been chewing away at him, but it's very minor to chew. So, all right. Uh, that is to hit. Yep, that'll hit. Uh, 23 hits, yes. Yep. Uh, you need to hit a 13, by the way. All right. Take 10 points of piercing damage. Oh, yeah, something else about him, too. Got it? You watch as some of his, his uh, wounds start to heal over. Uh, second. Uh, now for the slashes. Slash number one. Left hand. 13. Uh, Misses. That hits. Meets beats. That. Oh, okay. Uh, 10 points of piercing damage and a constitution saving throw. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Con save. Kapow. 15. Uh, that is enough. Hooray. As, as, you, as you're very adept at shaking off the uh, the infection, which is good because you're very good at getting infected. Yes. Or getting almost infected. Uh, and a nine misses. So it kind of just furiously kind of lashing out at you, trying to hit you for all of it, all of it can. Here's uh, Amrun, at the beginning of your turn. Okay. Uh, where are we? What did I do with that? That is a strength saving throw. Yes. What is your What is your save, uh, uh, Zach? Oh shit, that's a nineteen. Twenty. Actually, it's right. a twenty. Okay. All right, strength saving uh, throw. Yeah. Seventeen. So that's I get almost good enough. I get pushed into the next guy. Uh, yes. Actually, you're thrown. 15 feet away, technically. Uh, I don't know how that's supposed to work for... As far as I know, if there's something in front of you, you hit it and stop. I mean, unless, right. unless it gets a strength save at that point as well. I don't know. It, it Well, actually, yeah, it hasn't had its turn yet. Yeah. But its turn's coming up, uh, which is kind of weird. What I will have is I'll have it make a dexterity saving throw <laughs> to not be colliding with you. Sure. <laughs> how about that? Uh, where are we here? You are eh, mildly dexterous. Yeah. I'm right uh, in front of it. I'm rude bowling yeah. is not something I was expecting to happen today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is probably supposed to have something else added to it, but until then, yeah. no. <laughs> you collide with it, so both of you are going to take essentially fall falling damage from one meter. Oh, wow, there you go. Now I'm hitting all kinds of ones. You each take, uh, take six points of of uh, bludgeoning damage sorry. as you kind of collide with each other. Oh, this is fine. Oh, sorry. Did we have... We didn't have Clarks and Sackus. Okay, so we're not having to deal with that yet. No. Uh, so otherwise, uh, you're knocked prone. I'm good with that. Well, it's better than choking to death on poison, I suppose. Mm-hmm. No, I'm happy. It, de it definitely is, yeah. Um... Okay, well, uh, I'm just going to uh, cast while I'm here on the ground. I shall stand up. I'm not using my movement anyways. Uh, I am casting, hopefully this doesn't end up uh, getting wasted. Yeah, it should be okay. I'm casting a level seven spiritual guardians. Woo! Oh, wow, okay. That's uh, what's the radius on that? The radius on that is 15 feet, so it will hit okay. everything that I do not like. Right. I hope you don't dislike me after I just like blew you into the thing, but you know, <laughs> yeah, we're all good. I'll buy you yeah. a drink. So, where is it centered? Centered on me, okay. And so, 15 foot radius, yes, okay. No, oh, and sorry. basically, the area gets filled with. I'm going to say little glowy jellyfish uh, okay. that start stinging things for radiant damage. 
All right. Let's do Hopefully one. this will knock out the Elithid's concentration. Yeah, it doesn't go through walls, but oh, man, I can see it fill it. it fills the area. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to put the uh thing over there so yeah, it, it pretty much fills yeah, the area. <laughs> um so I do not actually have this spell set up, so I will use the Okay, I'm going to have to use the calculator twice cuz there's not enough dice. Uh five There's eight, plenty of dice. Just 23 and then just roll what what what's what's going on here why can't you calculate this just right slash roll space D, oh, whatever i always have just been using the thing up on the side oh okay okay just so it's here. 31 damage they have a 17 uh save just let me see what the save is okay, let's bring up a spell myself here to check so, sorry, level three uh, oh, it's around you. Yes, fifteen okay. so it does not, around me. Yeah, so it's not quite. It's not quite the same spell as I thought it was. It doesn't catch the illithid. Mm, he's within fifteen. Not according to this. Let me just check. That's ten. Oh, oh. is that a ten foot radius? That's a ten foot radius. Okay. okay. I'm not able to grab my. There we go. Just wanted to check. Uh, nope, that's fifteen feet. So yeah, I gotta resize that. Ooh. I feel like I'm using like welding gloves trying to use my mouse for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a wisdom save against 17. Perhaps. Just a second. One thing at a time. Yep. Okay. So, I, oh, damn it. All right. Draw a shape. Uh, so, 15. 30, oh, wait. 15, no wait, yeah, 15, oh wait, <laughs> I don't think I have enough space in the screen. That doesn't work either. <laughs> I just want to draw a circle, man. <laughs> I'm actually surprised that their circle tool doesn't have like a measurement so I can actually see it. Maybe it does. I, I maybe I haven't found it, but yeah. Um, all right, For so. right now, I mean, they might knock me out of it next round anyways, but. Uh... There we go. I got one. Big, oh. And I only want to draw one thing at a time, not two. Whoosh. All right. So there we go. Oh. Now I've got a sense of how big that is. So yes, just enough, just enough catch him in that. Yep. Uh, all right. And it is a wisdom saving throw. Yep. Okay. To take half damage. All right. Let's start with let's start with the big guy. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, wisdom. Okay. To do. Twenty three to resist from him. So he only takes fifteen. Okay. It's still a concept or a concentration. Uh, yep. I heard concentration uh, at first, and it's like what? I will roll that one right now. Oh wait, it's concentration. Uh, okay. Uh, so that is that's enough. It's only fifteen points. Oh damage, yeah, so it's only it's a ten dice. That, so okay. Uh, the red uh, makes a uh, sorry. Was a wisdom oh, yeah. again? Yeah, he's not so wise. He's not so wise. Uh, is that really what it is? That's kind of sad. <laughs> it is. Wow, really not wise. <laughs> Even less than wise. So. He takes 31 uh, radiant. Uh, nasty. He's looking rough from that one. Uh, oh, sorry. No, wait. He has advantage. Let's try that again. He might roll better than... Uh, what was the save? 17. 19? 17. So he doesn't make it anyway. Uh, let's see. the This guy... He has a wisdom save, which is also terrible. Hmm, look at that. All right. 
They don't look like very wise creatures. It's kind of they don't really do the they? magic resistance. Well, they're hanging out with an eleven. Uh, so yeah, that one's just a straight up roll. Uh, but also advantage. Seventeen makes it, so he only takes half damage. Yep, fifteen. Fifteen radiant. Fifteen radiant. Okay, how are you feeling about Zakis? Do you like him now? I like Zacchus. You could include him in that. Uh, all right, all right. Well, you took six uh, damage, I... you didn't take 31. <laughs> <laughs> Just a second to see one more thing. Which, uh, that one is plus that. So, uh, does not save against the... Uh, no, he made the saving throw, so he's not, he's fine. Mm. Oh, for, um, yeah, yeah. It so needs a, only needs a 10. Yep. Uh, okay. Wow, that was devastating. Also, All right. they have half movement while they're in the area. Cool. Oh, that's what I forgot. Never mind. One more thing. What? Do, 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 do. Oh, actually. Do, do, do. Uh, oh, grabbed the wrong one. Do, do, do. All right. He was smart. Okay. Uh, that was uh, Amrun Alasar. Yeah, I and can that was your... can do for bonus actions. Okay. Why is Zakis standing right behind you? Oh, that's right. He was standing. Yeah. Wait. Uh, Zakis, uh, that actually puts you right in the middle of your own wind, by the way. Well, the wind is constantly projected from him. Uh... Hmm. Bonus so I had okay. a bonus action. He can change its direction anytime you want, or on each turn. Is it projected from him, or is it just when he starts, it's projected from him? No, it. Uh... Let's just check this one quickly here. For the sake of simplicity, uh... where it was. It blasts from you in a direction you choose for the spell's duration. For the spell's duration. Yeah. It keeps going, but it's from him for the duration. Okay, that's that's weird. All right. That means that he's uh, kindly, kind of blowing it on you still. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> to keep away, so. <laughs> uh, so gray, gray, black. That guy uh, is going to try to resist against this spell. What is the uh, save on? Twenty. No. What's the uh, what kind of save? Strength save. Strength. Yeah. Yeah, I believe okay. so. All righty. So he's going to try to save against that. And gets a 25. Oh. With a natural 20. So he stays where he is. I think he takes half damage. Oh, there's no there's damage. damage right. Normally. Yeah, so after kind of colliding with uh, with uh, uh, Amrun, he stands up on his, or stays on his feet, grips his uh, his uh, 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 taloned toes into the, the uh, ground, but stands his, his, his ground. Uh, let's see, what is he going to do? Okay, first of all, uh, we need to grab that. Oh, I put it on the wrong level. That's why you can't see as much of it. There we go. Do, 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 do. As that drifts downward. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is he going to do? Uh, he's going to realize, man, this isn't worth it. And he's just going to go back into his portal, right? Uh, no, he breathes in. Uh, this time, and you see, actually, the the uh, circular uh, cloud uh, vanish as he breathes in, looking for another breath. This time, kind of, <laughs> as you see smoke rolling up around his mouth, mm -hmm. and then he opens his mouth, and a small little red dot appears from it uh -oh. as he casts fireball. Yep. Uh, well, that gets also counterspelled at level <laughs> five. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, yep, it, it, it diminishes and he blows outward and you get a nasty, uh, case of, of summoning breath, I guess. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, in the face, I'm ruined as, as this, uh, goes away. Uh, and I'm assuming because the uh, gust of wind is concentration that drops. Nope. Uh, is it concentration? Gust of wind is. Yeah, but you're not doing another concentration spell. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, counter spell is I don't think concentration. Yeah. That'd be weird. No, it's just a reaction. Reaction. It is a third level spell or a fifth level spell used up, however. Um, it's third level, but I'm casting it at fifth. Yep, yep. 
Uh, yeah, so he stays there, does that, does nothing, and doesn't really need to. Actually, you know what? He's going to step out of the, ra- the way of the of the uh, of the wind. He's just allowed to blow through and hit Clark instead. Um, Fire Zera once again floating up in the sky. I don't have hands, okay. so I can't grab onto the wall. Okay. Uh, Clark, you can see that uh, Fire Zera is struggling and floating up in the air. Uh, seems to be frustrated and unable to move. And also, uh, Amrun, you can see that as well. Trying to move and not able to grasp onto anything nearby. Working on it. Uh, let's see. That is Farzera's turn. I'm assuming you'll hold your action if anything comes close to, to bash it. Yep, but I can't do anything, so. Okay, Clark. Uh, I would like to uh, destroy Red. <laughs> okay. He would like not to be destroyed. But it's okay. not really up to him at this point. <laughs> I'm going to take a minus five oh, to yeah. both of these roll. Okay, okay. Just a second need to do a calculation. Yep, go for it. Oh. No, no. Uh, no. It's not the one. Okay. That is all of the not misses. Yeah. Uh, 27 do attempt. okay? Uh, the 27 minus 5 plus 3, <laughs> so minus yeah. 2, yeah. Uh, is 25. That definitely hits. Okay. Does the botch uh, negate the second attack, or are we good to go ahead? I'm, I'm not going to be that mean to you at the moment. Okay. Just thought I'd ask. Here we go. Uh, you, you kind of scrape along the ground, and the, the, the glaive kind of... Uh, if it were a metal weapon, you would be worried about dulling it, but you've already shown today that it really can't be dulled. Woo-hoo. It's not in the way you think. Uh, so that's uh, nine plus four necrotic, plus ten more. Yeah, that's it. Plus ten more. So nineteen. That rhymed. Yep. Uh, twenty-three. Uh, nine. I can't do that. Flashing in three or four. Uh... Oh, sorry. You're right. Twenty-three. All right. That definitely yeah. did a number on him. You see a wide gash open up. He was overconfident from that weird first attempt you made to hit him. And kind of le- leered in close towards you, and you caught him up underneath the chin, the chin, the chin rather, and sliced in nastily. Nastily. I would like to do a bonus action if I could. Certainly. I'm going to try to do an action surge, which will give me another Ooh. couple of attacks. It will indeed. My intent now is to grab the poor lad and hurl him into the flaming sun above us. <laughs> okay, make a make a grapple check. He's not that much shorter than you are, though. But uh, so throwing him that high might be really difficult, even though you are fairly strong. I think. I think this uh, is the thing. So it's actually a, an acrobatics or athletics check. Oh, sorry. Uh, stand by. Let's try this then. So uh, let's see. So nineteen. Okay, and it will roll. It's to defend, not having much hope in this one. No, you have grappled a hold of it. Right. Uh, now, so are you putting aside the glaive to do this? Because it's kind of hard to do one-handed. Sure. That's okay. We'll, we'll drop the weapon okay. for this. This is important. Uh, the second attack is to hurl him into the sun. Okay, this is going to be extraordinarily hard because he is heavy. Okay. And you are not extraordinarily strong. Does the wind help at all? Uh, straight up, yeah, but hurling other people is not, especially hurling them 20 feet up, that's that's a little difficult. Yeah. Oh, well, here we go. That's like catapult strength, but you can give it a try. Strength roll. Yeah. Well, we'll use the legs instead. It's going to bounce them right up there. With your legs. <laughs> yeah, with your legs, yes. Uh, unfortunately, you're unable to kind of get him much more than a foot or two off the ground. Oh, wow. He's kind of resisting and holding on to you. He's a <laughs> uh, that was oh crap uh, beginning of your turn strength saving throw sure. some of that may not have happened 14 uh, you fail so actually uh, so you'd be knocked over you're not up against the wall anyway you stand back up proceeds pretty much as normal there's not really much effect other than the fact that you were knocked over all right all right. Uh, that is uh, Clark's turn. Uh, let's see. What does he want to do? All right. Over in the corner. Still quite happy with that. Uh, that 
that lasts for plenty of time. Yeah. The uh, illithid is just going to move out of that range. And it's hugging up against the wall, backing away from the strange, uh, twisting uh, craziness that's happening in front of him. Zakis. Now you can choose as a bonus action to drop this spell, the Gust of Wind. Also, you're muted. Yeah, I was being talked at. <laughs> okay. Um, or you can change the direction. Hmm. And I can't. Well, I did see other things in the room. Um, you really haven't. Oh, no, you popped all the way in, didn't you? Yeah, I, I shot a firebolt <laughs> at the Mind Flayer and then went back out because there was a lot of nasties in there. It's true. Uh, you do see the... Uh, you can kind of just make out the edges of the fire elemental still hovering in the air, uh, spinning frustratingly. Okay. Can I uh, redirect the gust of wind to blow the fire elemental into the floor? No, because it has to be going out from yeah. the You'd have to be above it to do that. It can change the clock direction, but that's it. But I mean, if I shot it at the ceiling, like it might, the airflow might slowly push fire's era back to the floor, right? Or does that not work that uh, way? It's a magical effect, not a not a logical effect, I'm afraid. <laughs> it would just end at the ceiling. D&D &D physics, ah! <laughs> <laughs> if we got real world physics involved in this, none of us would have a clue what's happening. All right. Oh, man. I should probably turn on more lights. I'm becoming more and more the shadowy game master here. I want to go in, but then I'll be next to that dude, and I don't want to be next to that dude. <laughs> that is a risk. Mm. I'm just looking at my spell sheet. Oh, Clark? Yes. Uh, you do take one point of damage for standing in the water. Uh, would you like me to take a few? I've been there for a while. Yeah, one's fine enough. It's only a small, slow thing anyway. He wasn't taking them before. I was taking them because I'm fire going into water. Oh, no, sorry. You don't take any from that. Yeah. Never mind. So you said I can water, see so. Elzera from where I am? You can make out the the angry red glow of Elzera, absolutely, or right. Fire Zera. Well, I will cast this. I'll I'll drop the um, gust of wind, and I'll cast dispel magic on Elzera. Uh, do you need to cast dispel? Is not a concentration. Do, but okay. Dispel is not a concentration. No. Nope. Okay, then I'll keep the gust of wind up and cast dispel magic. On Elzera. Okay. What level? Yeah. Four. Okay. The spell effect ends. Uh, let's see. And... I believe she floats down. Yep. So Right under red. Fire Zera, you find the, the, the force holding you aloft no longer, uh, no longer holding you there, and you start to slowly drift downward, uh, which is going to be a bad surprise for somebody in a moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, let's see. That triggers my held action. Uh, you won't get down there until your turn. So, uh, uh, uh and people are probably going to get the hell away from the thing. Uh, cause nasty. Uh, mm -hmm. that was Zacchus. Okay. Yes. That was Zacchus. Uh, what does he have? Hmm. Oh, okay. How much are we doing right now? Hmm. Yeah, how big a radius is that? It's always a fun question to ask, isn't it? It's only a 20-foot radius. Let's see what a 20-foot radius looks like. Do 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 do. Uh yeah, I wouldn't be able to hold both of them. That's alright, he'll do one. Uh, as a uh, ooh, drink. 
from over in the corner, unseen as to now. And thus, hmm, actually... It's a weird set of spells for for a creature that can do this. Because all of the things break the things. Oh, actually. Okay, never mind. Yes, from over in the corner, unseen by any to the moment, uh, the, the gray slod returns to existence. And it breathes inward and a small moat of fire emits from its mouth, heading towards, uh, actually, it can't really get the angle it wants there, can it? So, it will center it on uh, Amrun, which actually gets everybody, <laughs> except for except for Fire Zara. So, a fireball erupts. I'd be immune anyway. Mm -hmm. True. Do I have to see the caster to counterspell it? Yes. Uh, you do. Damn it. So, fireball. That is a dexterity saving throw, I believe. Yes. Yep. From everyone except for Elzera, including all of my guys. Haha! -ha. So. I double failed. <laughs> Second, I gotta check the thing. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Amrun fails, uh, Zakus succeeds, barely, Whoa. but succeeds. Uh, these things aren't primary spellcasters. Uh, from, uh, Clark, I'll need a saving throw as well. Yes, uh, the saving throw on my sheet on the computer here is a little bit different. Yes. I've got a plus five. Uh, yes, I meant to mention that. Uh, I think uh, you added that plus three because champion gives you plus three to any uh, strength dex or con check that you aren't yeah. adding proficiency for. Saves aren't checks. Okay, good to know. So I'll go ahead with the three then. Pardon me for the wait. Okay, it's no problem there. How about that? Uh, and that is, that is a fail. Ooh. Uh, and I just need to check for this guy. Who has that? So that's that one and a success anyway. So those guys both save. Uh, 26 points of fire damage if you saved, 13 if you did not. Other way. Or... <laughs> hmm? 13 if you. Uh, it's 13. If... Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> if you fail to save, you get by. Uh, and then if you're in immune again or resistant, I have a question. Even less. Yes. <laughs> Am I aware of this attack? Are you aware of the attack? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Okay. I would like to spend my reaction then. Uh -huh. You've already spent your reaction to do action search. Uncannily dodge. This is a reaction, not a bonus. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yep. Uncanny dodge. Dodge. Yep. Is that Take. from an attack at you, or is it an attack I have to be, you see? I have to be aware of it. It's, but is it an attack that targets you? No. Uh, well, it's, it, it's if he's about to take damage and you can see it coming. Uh, that one always throws me off. I'm just going to quickly look it up for myself so I can refer to get my brain working properly. I think you're right. Uh, this is uncanny dodge, right? Yeah. Yep. And you, an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack. Is this an attack? Mm. It's a ranged effect, a ranged area effect. Uh, it's not an attack targeting him. Okay, I'm cool with that. I'll cut my reaction. Him. It just has to be an attack. Uh, I'm okay with it, Mark. It's all good now. Yeah, I, I, I literally just saw it ruled the other way, uh, and it's kind of making me think that I, I, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So 26? Don't think it's going to, uh, 26, yeah. Okay. Uh, one moment. I'd like to draw your attention to the bar above Clark. Oh. Clark drops. Clark drops. I'm enough to kill him. Is, uh, well, enough to put you at zero. Mm. You don't. You wouldn't die unless I gave you like what is your what is your max hit points? Uh, One hundred and three. So I'd have to do two hundred and six, or well, not two hundred and six, but one hundred and thirty or something at this point to. To kill you. Oh, also, I spoke too soon. 
Uh, <laughs> I have one hit point now because I am an orc ish person. That's right. You are an orc. Yeah. Ish. Hardly. Right. This guy is. Oh, yeah. Sorry. This guy needs That's to make one of them. Uh, oh, yeah. There's no concentration spells. They've all, they've all stopped concentrating. All right. All right. Baboom. That happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have to make a with. save. A, co a concentration. Uh... Yes, you do. Uh, let's see. Right. I think I do too. Uh, for your gust, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. You didn't drop it. I got a twenty. So you take. Uh, oh, uh, that's to keep my spell twenty. He took twenty. Yeah, the gust dropped. So it's. I needed to be uh, thirteen. Ten plus half the uh, thirteen. Yeah, you're fine. All right. The massive explosion centered on on uh, on Amrun fills the room with fire, which for Fire Zera feels really kind of nice, actually. Uh, kind of restorative. It's like a, it's like a, it's like you know getting a mud bath. <laughs> it, it's it's good in glazing for the fiery skin. Uh, that's that one's go. The red uh, grimace is a bit at its friends tactic. Friend? You don't know if they have friends. <laughs> they may just have uh, angry people. Uh, seeing Clark in front of it, waver for a moment. It will press an attack. Because because hey. Uh, free meal. Well, not exactly free meal. Still probably won't hit you. Actually, no, it probably will. Oh, it did not. Aha. So as it lunges to bite, you're kind of weaving and wobbing, wobbling on your feet, and it kind of snaps just as you wobble backwards. Frustrated, it lets out a howl and tries to slash at the... That one hits. Uh, and you go down. There's no... <laughs> I, I, can, I can't do less than one point of damage. I can have uh, But you go down. Uh, you you could, but I can't do less than two points of damage because <laughs> it's two dice. Uh, however, you still have to make a Constitution saving throw. Sure. Here it comes. Bam. That is a success. <laughs> Nothing can really do anything against you. It's really weird. Uh, however, sees the looming threat of the large flame overhead and does not like that, and moves over to confront Amrun. With the uh, with the right hand this time, trying to slash at Amrun. Because it still has one attack left. 17, does that hit? Nope. Yeah, I didn't think so. Bounces off your shield, although it's now uh, in front of you, snarling and angry. Uh, that is Red's turn. Amrun, it is your turn. No, wait, wait, wait. What's your special fancy thing? My what? Your spirit guardians. Oh. Sorry, yeah, they were t supposed to take damage. Yeah. Uh, it's a save, right? Yeah, 78. Uh, it was just, it was only red that's in there and gone, so uh, let's see. Let's try this funky roll thing you were talking about. Oh, wisdom save. Yeah, yeah this should be funny. Oh, yeah, he's super, super wise. Wow, I crapped out on the damage a little, but... There's his whirl. Six. Okay. He's not so wise. He's wise enough to get out of the way of the fire, but not wise enough to get out of the way of everything else. He takes 28 radiant. Oh, wait. He has a chance. He has advantage. Oh, yeah. Nope. But that's not enough. <laughs> uh, 28 points of damage. Poor little guy is not. Uh, that's Clark. That's why it's empty. I didn't mean that to sound so bad. Uh, I need to put you to back so I can grab him. What's happened to his numbers? that red oh that's <laughs> i was wondering why i couldn't damage him it's my pov dot that i just grabbed mm -hmm. so let's move the pov dot so i can grab my there he goes so 28 points of what kind of damage radiant oh yeah that's nasty uh he looks rocked by that and even more in, in sense which is why he came over to you in the first place makes perfect sense totally understood mm -hmm. However, it is your turn. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. So I can see red, and I can see gray black. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am going to use my second channel. 
uh, they get to make constitution saves as I'm going to suck life out of them. All right. Uh, say five die, five d six on red, eight d six on uh, gray black. Red gets a seventeen. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's enough to save. And gray black gets a twenty three. Okay, so they both take half. Uh, let's see. Six, so red takes, wow, that crapped out. Uh, five points. Ooh. Uh, and... Gray takes half of 27, <laughs> which is 13. So Nasty. 18 points to split up. Uh, all of them are going to Clark. Okay. So Clark gains 18 hit points. As the tendrils plow through the two of them and kind of jab into Clark's sides, you feel your eyes wow. open once more, and you are alive. Again. Again. I, I am going to cast a spell. We don't really have a token for it because I should have maybe found one, but I uh, am going to cast spiritual weapon. Oh, no, that's concentration. Never mind. Um, yeah, that's my action. That's my movement. Uh, I'm fine. Oh, wait. Did you actually drop that gust of wind? Yeah, I failed the, con uh, the concentration save. Okay, I just want to make sure I get rid of it so I don't forget that or remember mm -hmm. it or whatever okay yep uh yeah i'm just gonna put my shield up and hope that elzara kills everything in the room <laughs> strong chance of it uh let's see that was amrun gray black uh that is what kind of save for those things wisdom, wisdom? yeah he's not the not the well, none of them are all that wise, really. If if it uh, happens when it starts their turn, wouldn't the illicit have had to make the save? Uh, he moved. Um, I think he. he on I think he did, and then he moved out of the area. Yeah, he took the damage the first time. He saved on the on the uh, spell save. Okay. Uh, sorry, this was a wisdom save. Yes. Oh yeah. All right. A uh, fourteen. He does not see. He takes thirty-three radiant. Woo! Ooh. Sucking a level seven spell. Nice. Uh, yeah, he seems rocked by that. Still, still able to stand, but rocked. All right. Uh, as some of his wounds close over. Um. Okay. Um. And he snarls and hisses and then there's a look that crosses his face which looks mean as he leans into his friend's space and looks back and aims towards just behind Zacchaeus and spits forth another fireball it will, it will be said right about there uh, so it'll only yeah, catch no Zacchaeus okay goes away as it once again puffs up <laughs> And he looks somewhat angry and frustrated, but otherwise, uh, yeah, otherwise not able to do much. So he's just going to stay where he is. I can't really do much. Uh, that brings us down to Fire Zara. You alight upon the ground. Around you swirls tendrils of blue and white, the familiar, uh, uh, what was it, seahorses? No. Uh, no, no, jellyfish. Jellyfish. Of, uh, jellyfish. Of your good friends, uh, spirit guardians. Before you, you can see the Illithid now looking somewhat less pleased with itself, as well as the uh, the gray. I move here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of expected that to happen. Uh, and I hit him, the Illithid. All right. The Illithid does not want to be hit, but it's not really up to him. Uh, the 10 and a 24. Uh, I'm guessing the 24 hits. The... 24 does hit. For 5 damage. Alright. The 5 damage is less of a concern than the fact that there's a fire elemental in his face. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, definitely concerning. Um, okay. That's uh, boom, boom, boom. 
Good. Clark, you find yourself restored once more to life. Yes. Around you swims the jellyfish of hope. Oh. All right, then. They kind of like the idea that, that yeah, a whole bunch of them have kind of glommed on to you and are kind of feeding you a little bit of uh, health. Is this red right here? That is red. Okay. Uh, he does not I seem to be entirely aware that you have come back to life. Well. It's not surprised, but it is yeah. close. Here's what we're going to do then. Uh, Clark is going to, okay, I guess I got to ask a question. How yeah. adept at weaponry is Clark? Uh, I would say very adept. Enough Seems that like he, could, loaded. he could call out the damage he's doing if he had a, a immobile target. Call out the damage? You've yeah, lost me a little there. You're like a hit point. Is he that precise? Um, I'd say it would raise the difficulty to be doing that minimal amount. Clark is going to stab himself with the glaive, but just enough to draw blood. Oh, with that, for a non-moving or willing target like yourself, yeah. that's fine. That's easy. Okay. So I'd like to do one hit point of damage to myself. Okay. You can easily just run your hand along the, uh, the, the, uh, the screaming blade of the glaive. Excellent. And then he will try to kill uh, the red guy. Okay. This is very likely to go badly for him. Uh, it's, it might go bad for Clark, too. We'll see. Uh, kapow! Probably not. Uh, 12. Unfortunately, 12 is a miss. Yeah. Uh, as you're a little how... wobbly getting back up to your feet. I got another question oh, for you. Sure. Does the glaive care if Clark is alive or dead, depending on how it does its charges? Does the glaive care about whether he's alive or dead? The, the glaive will not expend charges unless uh, unless Clark is alive. Right. He directs it. But, but if he has any buffs up because of the glaive and he dies or passes out or gets KO'd, do the, the charges uh, exist or they drop? Oh, you mean the active charges? Yeah. The active charges still, still they don't require concentration. Specifically the buff that he's got on right now. Yeah, that doesn't require concentration. Because uh, he had a plus, he was plus three, plus three. That would be a 15 to hit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't realize you didn't calculate it in. That is definitely a hit then. That's why I'm asking if it's still active, if Clark dropped the floor. Sure, sure. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not, not able to track there. all of your bonuses. I just can't keep that all in my head. So no problem. Um, if I, I'm only reading what I have in the screen in front of me here. So. Three, four. All right. Uh, attack. 17 slashing and three necrotic. What does it look like when you finally gain your victory over this red slod? Oh, it's just going to poke right through him again. It, it's very impersonal. Okay. All right. As you stand up and you kind of run your hand along the blade, feel the, the warmth uh, kind of allowing your hand to grip that glaive even tighter. You may even think that the blood is somehow soaking into the glaive's heft, even though they're half rather, even though it doesn't even seem to have a real haft of its own. But the glade snicks out like a large, like a large uh, 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 folding knife, and you simply slice into, into the back of him, half looking at the next attack you're going to make mm. as you pull upward, and the glaive kind of serrates through his body, tearing it in two from the upper part on. You see the body just sort of uh, in front of you, Amrun, the head just kind of slides off to the side as the thing crumples to the ground, hey, already starting to hey, dissipate. Hooray! I'd like to use a bonus action now. Well, that's your first attack. <laughs> well, if I'm counting my hitting myself as the first attack, so. I mean, that's a, that's pretty much a free action. I'm not uh, worried about that. It's important, so I'd like to take it as my first action, if that's okay. All right. All right. I'm not going to argue with you. The bonus. Here comes the mm -hmm. bonus. What is the what is the, what, is the, what are you doing with your bonus? I'm going to strike a gray black there. Okay. Well, that definitely hits. I am looking forward to the day when I do give you AC 29 things to hit, but, you know, yeah. until then. Oh, there we go. Um, or 32, I guess. AC 32. Hey, that, was, that was a crit. Was it? Because I couldn't tell. It says 2190. Uh, oh, yeah, it was a crit. Yeah, I normally yeah. would outline those yeah, in it's, green. It's not glowing green for some reason. Maybe you're set to... No, no, it still should go green. Oh, well. Um, okay, well, I'll do two damages then if you like. 
go. Yeah, sure. Okay. That is so, considerable. Uh, so let's nine, plus three on each of those. Yeah. So. It would be because that'll have some 34? modifiers in. It'll have like yeah. Four. Uh, four uh, add both those together, then the plus threes, and then subtract four. Uh, so that seems like a lot of unnecessary math. Uh, it's, it's just twenty-two slashing and eleven necrotic. Twenty-three slashing and eleven necrotic, because it's plus three. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, but the. Uh, the strength bonus and everything is counted in each of those damages that he rolled. Oh, that's not the dice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, he rolled the damage. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, that doesn't. However, matter. he also gets a third damage die because he's an orc. Uh, if it had counted the critical, it would have all been in there. But uh, so he should. Oh, it should. Like a D10. So six and six. That part's easy. Yeah, it would. Then it would actually be nineteen slashing. 22, 25, and then 11 necrotic. 30, and then your extra die. So 30 plus an extra die is what I'm reading. Okay, yep. Here comes the D10. Kapow. <laughs> 33 points of damage. <laughs> Nasty. Excellent. Uh, I do have to check something. Yeah, no, that that just nasty. So uh, it doesn't go down. It's okay. But it's a massive slice across it. You see, the 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 you stab in with the the one blade and then kind of swing backward, catching it across the chest, leaving a nasty looking gash. The screaming, whirling uh, dervish uh, black shadow teeth and fang carving into it and carving a nasty gouge across its uh, across its chest, uh, sending blood and ichor flying in all directions, as well as little chunks of flesh which go flying. Oh. Uh, it reels a bit from that that wound, uh, and kind of reawakens its gets a, its a, its awareness of you, which it kind of discounted for a while. Hooray! Woo. All right then. <laughs> that for me. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Uh, the illithid is taking damage because it's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Three. <laughs> All right. Oh. That's not. That's not a happy yellow thing. Let's see what it's going to do. Um, hmm. No, it knows what you are. It knows that's not going to work. Oh. Uh, no, it kind of knows that's not going to work. Uh, it is going to uh, wave its tentacles in the air. You see... Beside you, uh, uh, Fire Zera, in particular, um, you had, yeah, you had seen some of the slash in the air when it came through before. It looks as though it is reopening that that uh, wound in space time and is going to proceed through it. So, I will give you an opportunity attack as it steps through, through the threshold. Okay. Let's see if it makes it through the threshold. That'd be funny. What did constant? What's it? What did? Concentration break if she if he does get hit. Uh, it's not a concentration spell. Okay. Nope. Uh, not the nine. Unfortunately, yeah, you rake at its back and it vanishes through the tear. Can I ask? Which a vanishes question? behind it. Sure. Uh, does it come within ten feet of me before it does that? Uh, let us see. It would have been right there. Not quite. It's basically vanishing between the upright uh, uh, crystals that are there. Okay. Just double checking. So just outside of the range of your extraordinary weapon. Uh, let's see. That is that guy's attack. So our that guy's action is to get the crap out of there. Zacchus. Hey, which ones do I still see? From where you are, nothing. Okay. Um... <laughs> I will uh, cautiously venture forth by two squares. Onto the dead slot. Yeah. I'll step on it instead of stepping in the water. Then I see another slot. Uh, it's already kind of dissolving into Icar, but yes, uh, you can kind of make it. Uh, make a make a make an acrobatics check. 
to, to kind of avoid the water by stepping on melting slod. <laughs> Acrobatics. Oh. No, not quite. You do catch you catch a foot into it, three points of uh, necrotic damage. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay, so uh, I will cast a firebolt at the one remaining slot. All right. It is not happy with that. Is that an attack or a... I got a roll to hit. It's save. Okay. Yeah, it's an attack. Uh, at okay. disadvantage because he's right next to it. Yes, you're too close for the ranged... I thought it was a... Ranged attacks... Hmm? I thought I was shooting at the one at the corner. Oh, the gray one. Ah, okay. okay. Oh, I didn't even notice the one that was right next to me. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's why I thought you said, oh, I see the one that's right next to me. Yeah, I can't see him. It's not on my screen. Okay, well, I'm going to die now. <laughs> nah, you'll be fine. Whichever one looks the worst off. Um, whichever one works the, works the work. Well, definitely the one that's right up close to you looks like it's a nasty con uh, clip from uh, from uh, uh, Clark just a second ago, literally a second ago. Okay, yeah, well, let, let's firebolt that one. All right, that will be a disadvantage because you're right next to it. Okay, I'll just roll twice. Well, the 19 is okay. Uh, okay. The 19 is still a hit, though. Uh, what kind of damage is it? Just fire. I got okay. nothing else right now. <laughs> As the fire... Hey, those are decent nice. numbers. Nice. As the fire burns across this open wound, you see the uh, it wince a little bit, but it didn't seem to take the full effect of that. Well, <clears throat> as long as it is. And I don't really want to run away from it because then it gets to hit me back. Okay, so you're staying where you are? Yeah, might as well. All right. The gray one is on fire. Hello. <laughs> it does not like this fire business. Oh, wait. Actually, the gray one oh, doesn't mind the fire as much as I had thought, which is handy. Still, any damage is damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's definitely caught in a, between a rock and a hard place here. Uh, let's see if it's got any tools at its disposal. Um, I mean, that does potentially work. Uh, no, I tried that already. That didn't work. Um, hmm. It's going to try to reopen the gash that was left behind. It might be able to. Uh, it does mean that it moves to the same spot that the other one did, which is also a uh, an opportunity attack for Elzera. I can't seem to get it to... Oh, yeah, that definitely hits. Why is it not going where I wanted to? Stay. Oh, whatever. Um, nasty. Across the back. A la lash of fire. Uh, and it's going to try. Uh, let's see if it can do that. Eh, it's not that good. Oh, it rolls a 17. It opens up the slash just barely and steps through. Leaving its other friend behind. You get the impression that they don't make friends easily. Somewhere... It's on fire still, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, that is its turn. Red is dead. Amrun. Um. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, both those guys before they left needed to make a wisdom save against my. You're right. Things. Uh, let's see. Well, the Mind Flayer. Uh, wisdom save. Uh, 26. So the Mind Flayer took 18 and the gray one took 36. Well, the gray one still has to roll. Uh, oh, sorry, wisdom is not its strength. Uh, 
It does not have that. So, wait, was that? Oh, no, wisdom saves. Yep. These are, they're not that wise. He was smart enough to get the hell out of there, but he was not that wise. No. Uh, what's the damage again? 36? 36. Yeah, that's a nasty send you home. <laughs> All right. That guy barely survived. Uh, that is uh, your turn now. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna sacred flame the uh, the uh, gray okay. black black. Okay, sacred flame is wisdom save, uh, or dexterity save, or dex save, dexterity save. Oh, I might actually get that one. Do, 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 do. 15 does not do it, right? No. So it takes 11 takes radiant. Radiant damage. Nasty. It's looking pretty rough. I mean, between all of the things that have hit it recently, Clark in, in particular as well, but it's been beaten down pretty badly. It's looking like it's uh, looking at its friends with anger and envy and jealousy and not calling them friends anymore. It's not going to send them a card or anything. Uh, uh, how bad is uh, Zacchaeus looking... Zachus, how bad are you? You're muted at the moment. <laughs> there's background noise. Uh, Zachus looks pretty rough, as in yeah. on a scale of 1 to 86, if we were to describe it that way, <laughs> like a 9. <laughs> uh, okay. That is the least subtle uh, <laughs> info share I've ever he seen. It's a level 3 healing word. So, 11 hit points. Woo! All right. But actually survive another round. Yeah. Like, it's miles that I'm ruined. It's like, it? thanks for keeping me alive. <laughs> no problem. I still like you. Sorry about the gust of wind thing. <laughs> that was fun. Okay. Let's see what thirty feet looks like. Oh yeah, that's plenty. Remember, if he's move, uh, if he's moving, he's got half movement. Yeah. Well, the first thing is he's got to do the save because yes. he's in the eye of the storm there. Uh, and oh, whoops, never close the window you're actually using. Uh, what is the save? Wisdom again? Uh, I keep forgetting. Yes. They are not wise. Oh, but he got a natural 20. Oh. So he takes half of 49 damage as I nearly <laughs> maxed out. <laughs> nice. Uh, what does it look like as he succumbs to this uh, nasty uh, winds of beautiful jellyfish? I think that the jellyfish swarm all over him, and when they're done, there's nothing left. Cool. All right. They're shredding him piece by piece, little tiny blackened Icarus shreds get pulled away. It tries to swat them away, screeching and crying, but its voice gets muffled as its throat gets torn out. Uh, the massive hole that Clark already made, they start swarming inward to it until it starts to bubble and pop all over it, and then <clears throat> they all explode outward as it turns to nothing but a pile of goo seeping into the water and dissolve. I'd like to take that one soul too, please. What, sorry? I, I struck it before it died. Oh, does he get the charge or something? Oh, yeah, you did strike Hooray! it. Uh, yeah, you feel the, the charge come restored to you. I can't have it. As the... I can't get it anyway. <laughs> well, if you, can't, if you can't store the charge, it does not come to you. Well, heck. Uh, as, it, as it retains its loose form and, then, and glides into the water, Poop. pouring out towards the large crystals to your to the west. For the moment, it appears as though all of the enemies you have faced are gone. Until another one decides to pop in through a rift. All of you can make an intelligence 
Uh, actually, Arcana check. Nope. Thanks. Pass. All right. Let's see if I can like <laughs> not blow this. What's that? Who's that first? Oh, that's yours. Uh, plus fourteen. Uh, I'm runes. Well, that's an. Uh, geez, you actually have a plus sixteen. What? Like I said, a lot a lot of the bonuses on your care on the written character sheet are not uh, up to date. Okay. Cool. So twenty twenty one from uh, from yes. Zacchaeus, nineteen know. from uh, Amrun. At almost the same moment, both of you realize uh, that where the things appeared and where they disappeared was between two upright large crystals in the water. If they could have done that anywhere, they probably would have done it anywhere because they had to walk into the spirit guardians. In order to achieve There's it. a kitty cat that wants to be in the shot. Yeah, she wants to get behind the TV. The cat strikes. Um, the cat wins. Well. She used the litter box, so she kind of stinks. <laughs> um, so two upright light crystals. Yeah, it's hard to see because Fire Zero is kind of covering over one at the moment, but it's moving over. I, I the would, moment. You can see there's large and, crystals. Like, down so I'm not in the water. All right. I will definitely make a note of this, and also how the bodies were like reabsorbed by the water, mm -hmm. which flows towards the crystals. Do y'all say that out loud? Well, I'm um, just. Uh, did I get it with a nineteen? You did. Yeah. Like I said, both uh, both Zakis and Amrun simultaneously. Uh, yeah, we. Uh... She knows she's been mad. We, we should move those crystals. Are they, Do those crystals look movable, or do they look like... I mean, they look like they're a good couple of feet across. They're almost three feet tall, a couple of feet across, but okay. not okay. one single crystal is two feet wide. Um, it's like a cluster of almost fingers sticking up out of the, out of the ground. Okay. Um, let me cast a few spells first, and then, yeah... We can figure out what to do, and we're going to have to rest because I'm about to blow okay. Yeah. So we will leave it there, and you guys can figure out what you might want to do oh, yeah, at this particular point. We've already run quite late yeah. anyway. Thank you for your patience. Uh, and, uh, yeah, well, there you go. You encountered some invaders. And they, with, hey. and they ran screaming for the most part, and some of them died screaming. I'll be back. <laughs> Possibly. This is yet another example of the uh, the tough fight you guys have ahead of yourselves as you start to encounter what is going on deep beneath the mountain, fronted by Azza, the town of, of Orcs. But this is clearly an old dwarven stronghold. What happened here? Why is it this way? What does this mean? What are you finding? Well, you can think all of that, and then we'll figure it out next week. I want to thank my players for playing. Guys... Each of you give yourselves a, a, a round of applause, but also let people know who you are. Let's start with Pat. I'm Pat. <laughs> playing. I usually do this at the start, not the end. Uh, I know, I know. I'm all at a Emerson Alisar, cleric of Palexia. Over to Marie. Hello, I'm, I play Elvera. I'm Marie, and check out the Facebook page. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Someone no worries. Message me. That would be uh, Legends of the of the Drowned Isles is the page. We can also find the group Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Over to Zacchus. Hey, I'm Nax, and as Marcus just mentioned, I play Zacchus, half elf wizard, who is not as close to nearly dead as he used to be. Thank you, Amrun. And yeah, he used yeah. to work at the at the Great Library of Vator, but now he's either getting a promotion or killed. We'll see. Tune in next week. <laughs> it's, it's a rugged uh, academic. Yeah. Life. <laughs> And Jody? Uh, it's Jody. Uh, I play Clark. Uh, he's a half-orc fighting rogue. And he can put another notch on his death belt today. Uh, yeah, so there you go. New creatures killed. Yeah. Um, Jody? Yes? If people uh, have stumbled across this on Twitch and are thinking, wow, I only caught the last five minutes, how can they watch more? Oh, they should check us out on YouTube. Uh, Mark has put up all the episodes that we have very diligently. And if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe, make a comment happen. And if you really like it, uh, please share it to your friends. 
All right, and I'm switching back to the to the main page, which is probably too late to do this, and I'll probably have to wait until it happens before we sign off, which is kind of bad. So I'm vamping a little bit because technology, there we go, finally catches up to me in the end. I want to thank all of you so much. Uh, an extra long session. We'll be back again next Sunday at 4 p.m. Atlantic, uh, if, uh, if, if at all possible. That'll be the 19th of April. Have a great weekend for the rest of it. Have a safe and uh, wonderful week. And wash your hands. We'll see you guys next week.